<laughs> I'm streaming. <laughs> the start stream button isn't there, but the end stream button is. It's like, so crazy. <laughs> so I just put a link here for this. Which is much better because there's no big black dots on it like the other one had. Um, if you don't have access to a printer, um, you can go ahead and just draw six lines down and a bunch of bunch of lines across. Um, we won't go to 24 frets, but we're going to go pretty high. I wouldn't mind going to uh, what be the 17th fret, so the 20th fret will probably be the highest fret we'll go to, because what I'd like to do is have you be able to see pentatonic number one at the fifth fret and pentatonic one at the 17th fret. They they appear in two places. You'll definitely see that with pentatonic number five. Okay, I'm gonna scoot back. I'm gonna turn on my light. I'm not leaving the room. I am not leaving the room. No sips allowed here. Hold on. I'm adjusting my light. That will work. I am not leaving the room. Do not take a sip. Actually, I totally forgot that I'd scheduled an appointment at 10 o'clock for uh, a window guy to come here to replace a window. And uh, so I'm going to paste this again. I'll try to, I'm going to leave that page up. So that uh, so I can grab it multiple times if I have to, I think that'll work. Um, I'm gonna pull up the Discord. Um, so if you're not a member of the Discord discussion group, um, you can join that. You don't have to participate, but it's always good to have uh, uh, this. This link should not expire. Copy. I keep forgetting. I've got somebody that was asking me about that. Um, uh, one of the comments you saw, I posted a new video yesterday. Now I may have, we may have issues today. My wife is teaching from home. So she's got, she's doing zoom with like 39 kids or something right now. <laughs> I was like, what? 39 sixth graders. No, I don't think it's 39. I think, I think they have 29 kids in a class or something like that. 30, 30 kids in a class, but 36 graders <laughs> right now she's zooming with hilarious, but she's in the other room. Uh, and hopefully that won't be taking up the bandwidth. I'll tell her to, to I'll tell her to just tell the kids to draw pictures or something, and so we can finish our stream. <laughs> um, so we're gonna have fun, <laughs> kind of, with this sheet. I'm not gonna. I, I I would love to be. I wish it was instantaneous. Our interaction here. Uh, I want to see how long the lag is. Let me let me time it. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to tell you to type in a word, and as soon as I say the word, somebody type it. You can all type it. You're all probably going to type it. Okay? So on the count of three, type banana. One, two, three. I want to see how long it takes for your... I, I've been speculating that it's 15 seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, guitar. Uh, oh, Gary, where where are you? You're in uh, California, are you not? So that was a, eleven seconds, basically. Banana. <laughs> you know, banana in Espanol is banana. It's one of, one of the easy ones to remember. I'm doing Duolingo, trying to learn Spanish. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get good at it, but I'm, I'm going to kind of keep it, well, not keep it a secret, but I'm going to kind of keep it on the DL for my Latin record producers, my Spanish-speaking record producers. And then I'm just going to see if I can get to the point where I can understand what they're saying to each other. Because <laughs> it can be like, yeah, Tom's guitars just don't sound very good. You know, and be like, no, I, of course, why would they hire me if my guitars don't sound very good? Yeah, right. It doesn't count if it's not spelled correctly. So, uh, so about 11 second lag. And the reason I was wondering that is because I was going to, you know, we were going to go through the, um, 
I was going to be asking you for fret positions potentially, but we don't need to do that. We can do this together. We're going to go one string at a time. We're going to go right down. Each individual string is a great way to see all the notes in the A minor pentatonic, and then we'll see some amazing, you know, we'll see all the scales and we'll see everything. It'll be cool. I think, uh, hopefully it'll be fun. Um, I'm going to use my black pen. I'm going to get ready to print another one of these in case, in case I jack it up. Um, but the idea is to be able to, to start to see um, all five of the pentatonic shapes on your guitar, um, to see uh, similarities, boxes. You know, we talked about boxes. Somebody asked about boxes. And again, remember, there's a, there's a little bit of a uh, kind of a, was a, the saying is a flying in the ointment um, with, the, with the major third interval between the third string and the second string. That kind of jacks up the boxes. You'll notice that all the box, when we talk about boxes, oh, <laughs> so we have a drinking game here if you're new. I don't see anyone new at this moment, but if I use air quotes, everybody takes a sip. But if we, um, uh, if we, um, oh, Gary, you're in Wisconsin. Okay, so that's pretty good. 11 seconds from Wisconsin. Okay, not bad, not bad. All right. I mean, I would expect it to take a little bit longer for uh, uh, David Sillers. Also, uh, opinion. I want your opinion. How would you all feel about me starting this at 9 a.m. my time? Um, there's a couple reasons. Wednesday, you know, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, Fridays, oftentimes I don't do anything before we get together because I know, oh, I got I can't get too involved and focused on something. And then when we're done, it's like, uh, you know, I kind of almost felt like I've worked a little bit. And so it's, I've got less of the day to deal with. So I'm kind of thinking maybe if I move this up a couple hours, um, I couple things. It'll be earlier for our European friends. And anybody who's a late night owl in, um, in uh, Australia uh, can join us, or New Zealand. Um, yeah, so noon would be good for you, and it, that, that would get us... For, yeah. All right. Okay. This is good to know. So, so... And the other thing is the fact that it's before, if you miss it, you'll log in and go, oh, oh, he already did it. Um, and I may put it in big caps, new time, 9 a.m. <laughs> so you can see that. But uh, I may I may start Monday that way. Uh, let me let me see. I mean, it means I have to get up and go. And, or, you know, I, I mean, I never sleep to nine. I, I never do. But it means I do have to set the alarm just in case. And you know what I got to do before? <laughs> I got to... Now, I'm getting free coffee now from Starbucks. Do you know that because of this live stream? No, it's not true. Okay, so I'm going to post this again. If you're Jim Lee, it's too early for you. Where are you? Uh, let's see. Okay, so, oh, no, that's the Discord. Okay, hold on. Let me grab this diagram, this thing here. Okay, I'm going to grab that. It's on this page. Um, copy. And I don't know why it's a GIF. That seems a little weird to me that it's a GIF. But here's this. So this, if you can print this up, if not, get a piece of paper out and a pencil and just draw six lines. Um, and then a bunch of frets across. And we're going to, we're going to write out every note together. All right. If you were students of mine, this is, we would totally be doing this in class together. All right. So this is, and this is cool because, like I said, it doesn't have the black. See, the other one I had had big black dots right here. And uh, I am using OBS right now. So this is what we didn't have last week that I did, or uh, Monday, that I did all the prep work for and we couldn't do it. There's the, the A's, the minor roots, and then here's pentatonic number five with the major roots. So that's what we didn't have. I uploaded those, though, to the, to the Discord. So, again, if you're new... You can join the Discord with that Discord link right there. I touched my face, so that's another drinking game rule. I'm going to have to make a... Um, I'm not digging that French horn sound. Um, what's this? Input... Input 2... Um, I'm going to um, put in my 
get a get a rock sound going. And I'll do a quick playthrough of all the pentatonics. Uh, let's see, what guitar sounds did I do? 94 rock. What does this sound like? Uh oh, hissy. <laughs> And I need a pick. Weird. Alright, so. So, uh, let me do the five pentatonics real quick so we can see them. Alright, so this is basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna take the E string. We're gonna take the E string and we're gonna find every note that's in the pentatonic. In the in the, in we're talking A minor pentatonic or C major, the same thing. A C E G, A, A C D E G is A uh, the A minor pentatonic scale, and C D E G A is the C major. They're the exact same thing, just starting on two different notes. All right. Uh, so the pentatonic one was here. Pentatonic number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Over here. Number five also. Back to one. It's a circle. It's, it's like a chain. It's like a five-link circle chain, um, like a chain you would wear around your neck, but only had five links. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to find every A, on every A, C, D, E, and G on each individual string. We're just going to go right up the string, and then as we do it, it'll all just kind of reveal itself. Pretty cool. All right? Um, and then, of course, and part of the, the goal there is to see the boxes. Now, uh, the boxes that we talked about before, notice that they tend to, tend to be on, the boxes are pairs, shapes that occur on neighboring strings. <laughs> Um, and so, like I said, George Harrison used them a lot. We like, This shape and this shape. They're all the same shape. Uh, but the thing is, you'll notice that the boxes tend to appear on the bottom two strings, the middle two strings, and the top two strings. And those are all tuned in fourths to each other. So that's why the shape the shapes are redundant. Uh, they're they're um, consistent because we're dealing with um, all fourths. The guitar is not tuned in all fourths. Don't ask me why. Uh, but I can tell you that if you ever tune a guitar in all fourths and try to play like normal chords, you know, you'd have to refinger everything. It's really, really, really hard. So it makes a lot of sense that there's that major third between the second and third string. But, okay, so let's get started. Um, I don't see anybody new. But anybody like that video? I kind of felt like I summarized it pretty good. Um, I, I, I may do a follow-up to it. It's see, We'll see. My... Third most popular video, I think it's got three or four hundred thousand views, is the one that's about um, uh, play most any song in Dad Gab. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, and then and then some of my early risers were the the um, you know some fun chords in Dad Gad one and some fun chords in Dad Gad two. Um, and then I did scales in Dad Gan, and that didn't really, I don't think I've had, that's had a lot of views or not, but um, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I thought, it, I thought it turned out really well, and I, did, I uploaded HD, so it's a, a 1080p, I think, right? HD, anyway, I, it gave me that option when I uploaded it, so I took it. Um, it was two gigs, it was a pretty big file, and I put an ad in the middle, sorry about that, but uh, trying to generate a little bit more revenue, I think the ads are paying less, uh, that's just a thing across the board throughout the industry, the ad industry. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, feel free to share it if you're on any acoustic guitar forums or anything like that. Feel free to share it. 
Um, I need to post it to a couple. I could. Um, I kind of hate to blow my own horn. I, I feel like that. I try to do it on Reddit. That's another one where uh, you can get a lot of... Uh, I've gotten a lot of um, new subscribers from Reddit because other people have promoted me. But it hasn't happened in a while. Uh, but Reddit is pretty pretty cool that way. And But you can't... I don't think you can promote your own videos or something. It's just... I tried to, and they kept taking them down. I'm like, okay, what? Did, I'm doing something wrong. I don't know how to use Reddit. Um, thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. Stephen, thank you. Bob, Bruce, thank you so much. Yeah, Leo, I saw your I saw your comment. Thank you so much for that. Um, yes, uh, Gary. Uh, yes, that is their. That's the default, and I'm having to go back and delete all of those ads. I should do a screenshot of that. It's insane. I'm like, what the heck are you guys doing? Um, so yeah, I apologize for that. That's not me. That's YouTube, and that's not. I w what I do is on these on the live streams. I go back later. I have been going back, you know, after the fact. In fact, I can go to back to this one right now, that one right now, um, and see if they actually did. The, uh, um, I go to, where is it? Oh, it's uh, monetize. Okay, this bar. And then it, it oops, okay, manage mid-rolls. Yes, literally, I'm going to do a screenshot. You guys won't believe this. Um, I'll post this at Discord. It's like, this is their default? Are you kidding me? So I can just, I just delete them all. So I delete all those ads because I feel, I'm not, I don't want to get an ad every five minutes. But I, you know, I put one every 30 minutes. And I don't know, there may be two ads at the beginning because I put one at the beginning and I'm putting one at one hour and one at an hour 30. And it may, I'm not looking at where they're coming in. It's, that's too much time. I can't do that. It, would, it needs to be very simple. So I apologize if the ads hit right in the middle of an important sentence. Probably not because I don't say many things that are important. Uh, but... Yeah, I really apologize for that. I, I, that's not me. That's them. And so I just just went back to that video. And I just did a screenshot. In fact, I'll upload it right now to Discord. So if you guys are on Discord, <laughs> check this out. Uh, let's see. Uh, where, where should I put in the general chit chat? Oh, yeah. It looks like people are putting stuff there. Uh, desktop. This is their... This is what's happening now. This is a new thing. This didn't. This didn't used to happen this way. But it's like what? I'm just like that doesn't make any sense. So um, I'm. So I have. I have to try to remember. And and it won't let me do it today. Like I can't. I have to wait 24 hours before I can work on this video because they have to finish uploading. So so they up when they finish. It's got like, and it's only for the first half hour. Like if you skip. Like 35 minutes in, there won't be any more ads. No more ads. It's like, I don't know. It's because I have that button pushed, and I think I need to turn that off, but I don't know how to turn, you know, like the default. But should I set up a guitar? Hey, I, you know, you could. I, I think it's totally okay to change a guitar with that tuning. Oh, 100%. 100%. And you can leave it in that tuning. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, you know, I mean, don't come back and sue me if your guitar neck breaks or something. <laughs> Tom said. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, the only thing is if you had a permanent guitar tuned to it, you might go with a little bit heavier strings because I think um, when you turn, tune this B string in particular down to A, it's a little pitchy. And if you've got pretty big jumbo frets, when you push a note down, it's going to go a little sharp. Uh, so if you go with a little heavier string, like if you've got... You normally have 12 and like 16 if you go more like a 13, 18, 13, 17, something like that on the top two strings. I think that would probably solve that problem. Um, I didn't really talk about that in that because I didn't want to get that deep into it because my, my, my hope was that this was for first timers in Dadgad. And I didn't talk about guitar players other than, other than Jimmy Page. And that Cashmere is probably the most famous song in Dadgad. Um, I, I couldn't think of a more famous song in Dad Gad than Cashmere. It's such a great, I mean, the way he played, you know, you know, it's, of course, it's, I'm not tuned Dad Gad right now, but, um, hey, Brazil, Sergio, great to see you again. 
I love that. Hey, Sergio, I'm going to probably start doing this on Monday an hour, two hours sooner at 9 o'clock my time. And I think you told me last time you're four hours ahead of me. So right now in Brazil, it's 3.20. Am I right? If I remember, you're, maybe it was, I think you're one hour ahead of New York. Um, so it will be two hours early. So, be, so I'll be starting around 1 o'clock your time, I think. I think that would be, I think it's better for everybody. Especially if I think about, there's so little, uh, other than Hawaii, there's not a whole lot earlier than me in the time zone. So when I think about as far as getting most view, the most viewers possible, um, so I'm going to probably promote that on my Twitter, on my f Facebook, on Discord. Oh, I forgot to put the new video up on Discord. Dang it. I knew there was one. I got to make a list of all these places I got to promote my video. Uh, okay, 1320. Yeah, you're just like Europe. Oh, 1520. Right. Yeah, 1520 would be. <laughs> four hours ahead. That's so funny. You do that in Europe. Too. It, you're just like Europe with the 24-hour with the, the clock. I still have to think. <laughs> when you say it's 1520, I'm like... <laughs> it's like, I forget what, what show was that that it was always... <laughs> I can't remember if it was MASH or whatever. No, it wasn't MASH. It was like somebody says, so it's 1500 hours now, so in 1600 hours we will begin. And the guy goes, so in 100 hours from now? <laughs> I don't know what that's from, but it always cracks me up when I hear that joke. And I just touched my face so we can take a sip. Cheers. Hey, Brazil, what are you drinking? You got to have some libations handy. Water's fine. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> Now, right there, what I did with the pentatonic number one was I went. I went up four notes, back down, and then up six notes, and then back down four, and then up six. It's just a way to kind of mix it up a little bit. And then the descending thing I did was something I got from Eric Johnson, where he does this a lot, and I love it. It, sounds, it just sounds so random. And it's a great way to play the pentatonic fast. And I do, it's groupings of five. So there's five notes. But instead of going back to the second note descending, like that, so instead of that, he does, does, he starts each group of five on the high note of each string. So this note, this note, this note, this note. Start, ends with a grouping of six, so we can end on the on the on the root note. Um, and uh, I think it's like I think, I think that maybe I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube, but um, so uh, but that yeah. So the, what I mean by he's, does five notes from this one, then five notes from this one, five notes down from this note, and five, six notes down from this one. And it's hard because you have that laying that You have to lay down your finger here. Go from this note to this note. God bless you. God bless you too, Franco. Where are you located? Franco Stagno. Stag uh, sounds familiar. The name sounds really familiar. Okay, 22. Tw yeah, in Holland, you'll love this being two hours earlier, right, Jim? Uh, I'm sorry, Jan? Okay, well, we need to get started because I'm just <laughs> chit-chatting. How are we doing on viewers? I'm sure we're losing people because it's like, Tom's, oh, no, actually, we've gone up, 35, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the low E string, and we're going to try to find, uh, oh, I can do this, too. I can put... Let me add the text. Uh, add some text here. Text, free type. Okay, whatever. Type in A, C, D, E, G, and C, D, E, G, A. These are the two pentatonics. And I'll probably just leave them right there. <laughs> Actually, this is, 
this is usable space in my opinion, because really you just need to see this area, right? <laughs> this is all a distraction right here. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. I'll put it here. Okay, so these are the notes. These are the two scales, the same scale. Those are the same scales. I mean, the top one is A minor pentatonic. The bottom one is C major pentatonic, the same notes. All right, so that's all we're doing. We're finding all these notes. So really, I could eliminate the bottom one. In fact, I think I will. Let me edit this. I'll just eliminate the bottom one because I don't want to cause confusion here. All right. So we, these are the notes we're going to find on the um, each individual string. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to print the. Let me see. Is, do I still have this in my cut, clipboard paste? Yes. I don't know why it's a GIF. That's weird. It's just a. So if you can print up this uh, this thing here, I just sent I just posted the link there. If you can't get a piece of paper out, pencil, do six lines down, a bunch of lines across. I'm probably going to go to the 20th fret on this because I want you to be able to see a pentatonic five in two locations, and I want you to see pentatonic number one in two locations. Okay. Um, I'm not going to use multicolored pens, but what I used to do was. I would put X's through the A's, all the A's, um, and then I would circle all of the uh, C's. So the A's would be all of your minor minor roots, and the C's would be all of your major all of your major roots. And what that would allow you to do is um, see good landing spots. Okay, it's like if you're in if you're in A blue, you know, if you're playing in the A blues, um, you know, <laughs> heavy metal blues, you're gonna want. You're going to want to know where the A's are when you... You're going to want to know where those A's are because those are good landing spots. And what they do is they tell the audience that you know what you're doing. <laughs> now, I don't think you should land, always land a lick on the root. That gets boring. Uh, it's always fun to land on different things. I like the seventh is always fun. The third is good. And you can bend it up a little bit, that minor, that C, in the key of A, blues, wants to go to C sharp. But then, you know, you always got, you know where those A's are, those roots, and I'm talking about whatever key you're in, if you're in B flat. The, the, those root notes are the same as you move up, up and down the fretboard. So, oh, here's another thing you can do, too, is we could, I could give you, um, some homework. If you want to print up a couple of these, I could give you, let's say, uh, do the E minor pentatonic and D minor pentatonic. Uh, that would be, um, E minor would be kind of the, the key up in the circle of fifths, and D minor would be the key down in the circle of fifths. And you could take the, you know, print up two more of these sheets and, and find all those notes. You can start to see, uh, and it would be good to do a, a fifth or a fourth away because that way it's not just moving them up a fret. It's you, everything totally resets. So it totally, so. D minor will look totally different on here than A minor does, even though the notes are very minor difference. I mean, the only difference between D minor and A minor is the E becomes an F. Yep, that's it. So um, we would, you could also take all your E's on here and go up a fret, and you get you get D minor. Okay, so let's start doing this. Uh, I wish I had a clipboard. Um, I'm going to use my pumpy nylon book, although I'm going to be careful because. I've, I've kind of wore this book out and the pages are falling out. So, and I apologize in advance to any of you who have bought this book. It, it hurts so bad. Okay, so on the low E string, all right? So obviously, on the low E string, and I, oh, so it actually looks better if I kind of shade the light from it. So if I get light on it, it's too bright. If I get shade, it looks better. In fact, if I shut this, it might even be better. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, so I wish I could do this like in real time. I could have a separate camera, couldn't I, aiming down. My wife just got one for her school. They gave her one so she can handwrite stuff and the kids can see it. Um, okay, so obviously on the low E string, this, this low end, put a circle there. Uh, what is this? I want number one. What is that? Oh, that's three. Okay. Number one. All right. So put a circle there on the low E. All right. So after E is G. So where is G on the, on the, um, see, I, this is what I want. If we had instant, if it wasn't, if I wasn't 11 seconds from Gary, <laughs> 
Gary in Wisconsin, <laughs> if I wasn't 11 seconds, uh, then uh, uh, I would say, I would be asking you what fret is G, but I'm not going to do that. We're just, I'm just going to show you. So the third fret on the bottom string is G. Okay. The next note we need is A. Okay. A, G to A is a whole step. So that's two frets. So let's go to the fifth fret and put a dot. Okay. And then A to C is a, a, a whole step and a half. Uh, in other words, a minor third. So that's three frets up. So we're going to go fifth fret. This is A, B flat. This is B. Here's C right there. I mean, you can see the bottom two notes of pentatonic number one right there. In fact, you can see the bottom two notes of pentatonic number five right there, if you remember it. The pentatonic number one, you should know. We spent some time on that. And so there are the bottom two notes. So you can see what's going to happen, right, as we go down the strings. Okay. Now, after C is D, and D is a whole step up from E, so that's a 10th fret. And then E is a 12th fret, makes sense, okay? If you're not at the 12th fret, you did something wrong. So D to E is a whole step. And again, we're going to keep going because I want, well, for one thing, we have to do pentatonic number four, which is right here at the 12th fret. Catherine, Kathy, what's going on? Nice. Um, okay, so 15th fret is G. So we remember we went up three frets to get to G. We got to do that again. So 15th fret. Sorry, I got distracted by the chat. Okay, and so there's the bottom of a pentatonic number four. And then here's, we're going to be number five again. Here, So that's G. We need an A. After G is A. And after A is C. And that's as far as we'll go. We don't need to go any further than that. And C is up three frets. So that would be the 20th fret would be C. All right? Okay, now we're gonna do the A string, all right? Well, A is obviously a note, so we can put a circle on the fifth string like that. Okay, so this is what we have so far. See that? And I will scan this and, and post it to the uh, Discord. Um, one more time with the Discord link. Uh, first off, let me give you the link for to actually make this, uh, to print up this uh, document. They're gonna be wondering where all this traffic came from. Uh... Uh, let's see. Discord link. Here we go. Invite people. Co oh, wait. Nope. Sorry. Make permanent. Copy. All right. So this link should still be good if you're watching this video weeks and days from now. It is weird. I, I look up the videos and I don't know if any other than the, I don't know if any, how many of these have actually, these live streams have actually gotten to um, a thousand video, a thousand views. I mean, I suppose if I go back far enough, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, not, not, you know, 700, 900, there's one, oh, the Father's Day Jam was 900, funny, uh, 958 for one of the, the chord progression, weird, that was the first chord progression video, oh, here's ten, uh, Dad Gad tuning, oh, got t 1,036, that's interesting, and then strumming and grooving that one, so a so, couple of them are over 1,000, but really, oh, here's one that's 1162, Blues Basics. So, but most of them, you know, it's, so in other words, <laughs> they don't really generate any revenue. <laughs> That's my point. Okay, so let's do the A string. Uh, my pen. Okay, so we have A. The next note we need is C. A to C is a third. So we're going to, again, go up three frets, a minor third. Okay, C to D is a, mi a major second or a whole step. Same thing. Okay, that's two, two different names for the same thing. So C to D, whole step. Well, there we go. And look, there's the bottom two notes, two strings of pentatonic number five. See that? Isn't that cool? All right. So then um, we have, uh, and you know what you could do too, is you could do this, print up a bunch of copies, and then you could start circling box shapes and things like that. Or actually, I'm going to upload this, so you can just print it up. And um, you can go through and start seeing, you know, marking patterns that you see or whatever. I totally recommend doing this in different keys. And I'll, I'll give you some different keys. Um, all right. So now from C, uh, D, we need a E, which is a whole step. So we're going to go right here. And again, you, now you're starting to see the beginnings of pentatonic number at the fifth fret, pentatonic number one. And then uh, the then we need a, a G. So a G is a third up from E. And that's going to put us at the tenth fret on the A string. And then we need an A. And that should put us at the 12th fret. If we're not at the 12th fret, we made a mistake somewhere along the way, okay? 
See that? And what's crazy is it's going to look like, what's crazy, besides my crazy eyes, <laughs> my eyes look crazy. Besides my eyes, what's crazy is it, it looks just like a lot of dots on a neck, right? It looks random. But you'll start to, you'll see these shapes and you'll go, wait a minute, the neck doesn't look so random anymore. And I think that's really kind of one of the byproducts of this. Uh, all right, so we need a, a minor third up, or A, after A is C, so here's C, three frets up, 15th fret, then the 17th fret, which is uh, C to D, and then the last one we're going to do is the D to E, right there, so that we have the beginnings of pentatonic number. So you can see you can see pentatonic number one showing up here, pentatonic number five here, pentatonic number four, three, two, and one. And again, those numbers are mine. Don't go to a guitar teacher, or don't go get in an argument <laughs> online at a forum saying, no, that's pentatonic number four. <laughs> People are like, what the heck are you talking about? My, Tom Straley, who's the authority of all things guitar, said that it's not, no, it's just the order that they occur. Um, if I were to put them in order of best to worst, it would probably be one, two, five, five or, I, I really like playing in four, pentatonic number four, so I would probably have to go one, two, four, five, and then three is the worst, hands down. It would be like that would be the order of preference. But you don't usually have preferences when you're playing on the fretboard. You just kind of go where your hands take you, and they all are connected. So you're going to use three, even though it's maybe the least popular one or least playable one, uh, because you're on your way to four. You know, it just is going to be there. So you need to know it. You can't just have like this gap in your knowledge and go, oh, what do I do now? Well, I'll go up here. You know, you lift your arm off the guitar, bring it, and bring it back down. Because <laughs> you don't want to play pentatonic number three. All right, so we're going to do the D string now. Here's what we got so far, the bottom two strings. We're moving along. Uh, D is one of the notes, so we can put a zero on D. And then after D, we need a whole step. So second fret is E. And then E to G is a minor third, so we're going to go up three frets to right there. And you can definitely start to see that pentatonic number five, that line, or pentatonic number one, where your first finger plays all these notes here, or your pinky on number five plays all these notes. You can start to see that take shape, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Okay, uh, so that's G. We need to uh, go up a whole step to A, this is the next note. And the next note after A is C, so that's a minor third. So up three frets to the 10th fret to C. And then C to D is a whole step, so we're going to go to the 12th fret. And if you're not at the 12th fret for D, you made a mistake somewhere along the way, okay? I always use the 12th fret as kind of the, when we're doing these kind of things, it's kind of like, oh, shoot, did I get it wrong? I'm off. I, and I've, got, I've been off before. I, there was something I did the other day that I was like, I was charting, oh, I was charting out, it's blowing. I was charting out, um, no, I was, I was moving string parts around. Uh, and I, I was off a bar on one of the strings and, and the other strings and, <laughs> and it was like, it doesn't sound right. I'm like, what did I do? And I couldn't figure it out for about five minutes. I was like, what? And it was one of, I, instead of putting them on bar 45, I put them on bar 44 and they were all off or something. So, so yeah, I can do that too. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Sorry to burst that bubble. Okay, so we're on a D right there. So I'll, the next note in, after D is E, as you can see right there. And that would be two frets up, 14th fret. And then a minor third up from that, E, is G. So we're at the 17th fret. And then the last one we're going to do is the 19th fret. And again, you could start, you're starting to see the shapes. Okay, and we're going to bracket this. And I, the cool thing, from my perspective right now, from where I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here, is that you guys aren't talking at all, which means you're doing this, which is awesome. Which is great. Okay, this is really cool. Now you're going to start chatting just to prove me wrong, jerks. Okay, we're going to do the G string now. No jokes. Come on, just get your get your mind out of seventh grade. Okay, so G is one of the notes. So we can put an open on there. So there we are, open. And the next note we need after G is A. A, A, A. So that's two frets up. So put a dot at the second fret. And then we need A to C as a minor third, so go up three frets, and that'll put you at the fifth fret, which makes sense. And some of you may already be filling it out, finishing it out, but I almost like going this way. Uh, and Leo had to chime in to prove me wrong. <laughs> Leo was actually playing Apex Legends, which I did all the guitar playing on. Cheers. 
I had a guy got. I'm getting a window installed, and I had the guy doing the uh, uh, doing the quote <laughs> today, and uh, he uh, <laughs> he. I told him I played the guitars on Apex Legend. He was like, I, "I love that game. It's my favorite game." It's so hilarious. He was like in awe. So I was like a rock star for a minute today. All right. So we're at the fifth fret. That's C. We need a D next, and that's a whole step up. We need an, an E, which is another whole step up. So that's seventh fret, then ninth fret. I'm trying to go slow so I don't make a mistake. Then we need a G. So now if you're not at the 12th fret right now, you made a mistake somewhere along the way because there's G. Okay. And um, uh, then we need from G, we need A, which is a whole step or a major second. And then a minor third from A is C. And then up from that is uh, D. And so it should look something like this, or exactly like this. I really like this diagram. Like I said, the fret markers are just little teeny tiny hollow circles, so they don't kind of distract from the big dark circles that I'm making, okay? All right, so the B string is not in play. Open B string is not in play. Uh, but the very first note we can use on the B string is the C, which is at the first fret, which you should start to see that, that makes, should make sense, but um, there's that, you know, you can start to see pentatonic number four right there in the bottom uh, open position. I mean, literally we have 66% of all the scales already down here now. So um, we've got four of the five strings. Oh, hey, Dennis. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're at C at the first fret. Now we need, the next note is D, okay? In the A minor pentatonic scale, A, C, D, E, G. Penta meaning five, five note scale. So D, and then the next note is E, which is a whole step. Next note is G, which is a minor third, okay? Which is the same as a whole step plus a half step. Um, then from G to A, that's also a whole step or also known as a major second. A minor second would be one fret, okay? Then from A, we need a minor third or a, uh, so C, A to C. So we're going to go to the, this is the tricky one, go to the 13th fret. So if you're not at the 13th fret, you did something wrong, okay? But that's the only one because the E string is going to be good. Um, it's the only open string that we can't use in the scale that's to stay pure in the scale. Now, that's not to say we can't use the open B string, because that B is that second over the E minor. It's a beautiful note. Um, totally, totally good note. But we're talking about pure shapes that we can build around. Uh, part of the reason you learn all... Hey, Pepper, good to see you. Well, you're way behind. <laughs> you may want... Uh, yeah, and the links to print this up is just up there a little bit. If you go up... Just a little bit up the page. It's the, not the Discord one, obviously, but the one above it, okay? Pepper, so if you want to print this, go for it. If not, you can just draw six lines and crisscross a bunch of frets. We're going up as high as the 20th fret, so you're probably going to want to have a nut plus uh, 20 frets. And I, I'm a nut, so but I don't count. Okay, so we're at C now on the 13th fret of the B string. And so we're going to go to, after the next note is D. That's the 15th fret. The next note after that is E, which is the 17th fret. And then the next note after that is G, which will put us at the 20th fret. And that's as high as we're going to go. All right. All right. So we're almost done. Almost done. Right? I'm doing good. Should we wait for Pepper to catch up? Pepper, you want to rewind and you know, go back about, uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, 44 minutes. I say go back to 14 minutes and we'll wait. We'll wait 30 minutes for you to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. I, I will um I will post this on the Discord as soon actually as soon as I'm done with it, I'll scan it and post it. Alright? So if you just if you're lazy or you don't have a pen or a pencil in the house anywhere. So here's where we are so far. We got one more string to go. And it's the E string, which means it's the same as the low E string, so it's going to mirror that. But we're, we're going to, I still want to do it in order, okay? And again, uh, before I do that, well, Bonnie catches up. <laughs> uh, I mean, Pepper catches up, sorry. Uh, it's also not a, bad, not a bad idea to play um, 
in is this thing in I've got a piece of music here what key am I in oh I'm in D minor never mind okay I was thinking hey it'd be cool if this is A minor I could just jam along with it but um, uh, my nose itches everybody get ready to take a drink Ugh. I'm itching on the outside guys seriously it's all about perspective right Uh, you do a total TikTok video about perspective. Guy itching his nose in the car. The person over there is seeing one thing. The person over here is seeing a total other thing. Uh, but yeah, I'd be able to play solo on just one string. So knowing. Is a great. I don't want to say I don't want to say it's a skill, but what it will do it was it will help you find ways to transi transition between the different shapes or or just open up doors. So when you're you think you're stuck on pentatonic one, if you, if you know all of the um, all of the uh, notes on every string, you can immediately. You can eat, you can more easily transition that way too. So it's it's great to see the shapes going this way up and down the fretboard, and it's also great to see the notes of the scales going up and down the neck this way. And when you combine those two two pieces of sets of knowledge, um, it really will open up your fretboard a lot. And I think personally, even more so if you know what notes you're playing. I know that makes it that's a little more difficult, but remember that the, the number one skill. People say, hey, what's the most important thing for me to learn? And I, my first question is, well, are you playing acoustic or electric? And if they say electric, I say, learn your fretboard. Learn every note on your fretboard. And this is a, this is a good way to learn it. I mean, technically, we've got five notes of the 12 right now. And here's the thing. If you know if this is C, then you know this is C sharp. If you know this is E, you know this is E flat. So, you know, by learning these five notes, you really kind of know these five notes plus the notes that they can lead to, which basically, you know, if you know G... And you know G flat, which is also F sharp. If you know E, you know also know F. So technically, by even knowing just five notes on the fretboard, you can take those five notes and find pretty quickly all the other notes you need to know. So you can just even starting there, you can you can use that as a um, gateway drug to, <laughs> to knowing all the notes on your fretboard. <laughs> So good though, no no buffering. Of course, now that I said that, watch what happens. It's green, very green right now. The light on my oh, oh yes. Okay. Um, yes, I 100% Gary playing bass, you, but you have two less string. Well, technically one less string because the E strings are the same. But yeah, or actually, if you have to learn a little B string, you're playing a five string bass. Um, I still have a hard time playing five string bass, but that's almost. All I play exclusively. I think when I did the, um, for that cartoon, when I did the sound like, uh, the, the sound like of Along the Watchtower, I played four string bass on it because uh, that's what they played. They really didn't have any five string basses back then. And Jimi Hendrix actually played the bass on that song. Um, and uh, I, I found someone who transcribed it note for note and they were pretty darn close. I had to make a couple changes, um, but it was very riffy. But I, it would have been really hard to play on a five string. But yeah, on a four string, it worked great. Um, yeah, no frets is being you know, violin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, violin players learn notes anyway because they only learn how to read. They 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 don't learn any other way. That was always the the thing that. And I, sorry, we're almost done here. I'm like stopping. Just finish, Tom, so I can go on and do something else. Um, but you know they. That's the thing about playing with orchestras, you know, guitar players, you know, we, we use tab, we use our ear, we just jam, we read notes maybe, you know, we kind of do all these variations to kind of get to this, to whatever we want to get to. Violinists pretty much only have one path to how, how they all get to the same location, you know, and then there's different abilities, but uh, very few violinists know how to improvise um, uh, and, uh, you know, 
and they don't need because they don't need it. They're not asked to. You know, Stephanie Rapelli, of course, was an amazing improviser. Uh, I mean, some of the you know, uh, Jean, Jean uh, um, what is it? Jacques Luponte. Uh, what was his first name? I can't remember. Uh, Jean Luponte. Jean Luponte. I think. Yeah, great, amazing jazz violinist. Um, but uh, when you sit with an orchestra, you realize how how bad your reading chops are when they're just like, oh, here's the new music, and it's like flurries of notes, and they're like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. they just read it like, like they're reading the comics on Sunday morning. <laughs> it's that easy to them. And you're like, oh my God, what? Wait, what? <laughs> you're like, oh no. And they're just like, I even look at the music. They look at it once, they've got to memorize it. Oh, I've seen something like that before, you yeah. <laughs> Dang it. So it's definitely a deficiency of almost every guitar player. I mean, I've known a couple guitars. George Deering, Joe DeBlossi, my friend Joe DeBlossi, could freaking read anything you put in front of him. Uh, and it's just, it's, you know, that's amazing. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a good reader, but I'm not a great reader. Um, in fact, when you, get, when, you, when you get things, books that have tab and notation, I really have to force myself to read the notation and not look at the tab. Um, so, oh, sorry, I missed a question. Pepper. Oh, wait. Oh, Bonnie. Sorry, Bonnie. Where's your question? Um. Okay. Well, Bonnie, that's a good question. They, I, that's that's. I didn't say no. Don't learn it. <laughs> All I said was, somebody. If somebody asked me what the most important thing to learn on the guitar is, I ask them, are they playing acoustic or electric? And so at that point, what I'm doing is I'm determining what's the most common deficiency. And what's the thing that's going to get you to the point of, of playing the kind of music you want to play? Electric guitar players tend to want to play rock and solo and play up and down the fretboard, okay? Acoustic guitar players tend to want to play songs. So, yes, acoustic guitar player, you can learn... If I were to put it on a list of 1 to 10, would learning your fretboard for acoustic guitar players be in the top 10? Yeah, maybe. Like seven, eight, nine, maybe in there. I don't know. The, the main thing to learn on a, the, the most important thing for acoustic guitar players to learn, and it's not the only thing, but is, is strumming groups. We've talked about this before. And, you know, too many acoustic guitar players, um, okay, we're, here's another drinking game rule. If I switch guitars, we, uh, we, uh, take a sip. So everybody take a sip. Cheers. Um, too many acoustic guitar players do. Okay, play another song. Okay. Okay, play another song. Okay. Yes. Uh, classical guitar players need to learn the fretboard. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely one of them. Uh, classical guitar players, yeah, you're not strumming, so that would not apply to classical guitar players. Classical guitar players, probably the thing I think is most valuable for classical guitar players, probably Giuliani studies, which is finger picking patterns. Okay? That would probably be like, it'd be tough. The top two, three things. I mean, you could put Segovia scales up there. But Scobie scales are great for getting that linear thing going up and down the fretboard. So uh, Scobie scales being like the G Scobie scale. I'm not seated correctly, but. Andre Scobie have kind of fingered and figured out the best way to play each of the major and minor, all 24 of the scales. And um, he, he, the fastest way to play him, like you, you probably try to variations on every one of them and go, okay, this is the best way to do this one. And and some of them are the same, like G major is exactly the same as a flat major. Maybe the same as F sharp major. Yeah, it is. Um, I think A major is the same, and B flat and B. So those are once you've learned the G major one, you've actually learned one, two, three, four, five, six of the of the pen of the Scobie scales. Uh, so there's definitely redundancy, which makes sense because he's again trying to find the most efficient way to play the scale. And we're talking about left hand. Um, so that would be a high, uh, you know, probably 
uh, Pepper, for classical guitar players, I would say that number two might be repertoire, learning pieces, which is kind of a, a big giant duh. But it's hard. It's hard. I, I should try to do a top ten list for every, you know, uh, for every uh, genre or style of electric guitar. But here's the top ten things you should learn, you know, as a guitar player. Here's the top ten things you should learn as a strumming acoustic guitar player. Here's the top ten things you should learn as a classical guitarist. Um, <clears throat> and you know, that actually, would be a great that would be a great series because I could certainly put a lot of books in there and make some, you know, Amazon coin. <laughs> I think I made 25 bucks last month from Amazon. I've made as much, two months, two months this year I've made $88 from Amazon. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that on YouTube, but that's pretty cool, you know? And both of were because somebody bought one of those, one of my, the loot. They bought the, I did a, a review of that loot. Actually, I did an, unbo an unboxing video of that loot. And I've had two people go and buy that loot because I have a link there where you can buy it on Amazon, which is pretty cool. Uh, the video I did yesterday, the, um, introduction to da the Dadgat tune. Uh, th there were no, I couldn't find any links for that guitar. Otherwise, I would have posted it, but I, they don't make that. I don't think they make that guitar anymore. Um, uh, let's see. I think that, oh, you, yeah, you know, Bruce, maybe it would be. I, I'd have to, I mean, you know, it would also <laughs> generate a lot of arguing. Okay, we got one more string to do. Let's go ahead and finish this. It's, are we are we to an hour yet? Because it would be great if I would have finished this less. Oh, good. We still got almost um, about three minutes left. <laughs> so I'm going to finish this before we get to an hour. Okay. So the E string is obviously open because e, e is right here. So if I can point to it right there. I wish it were floating right here. Then I would be able to really point to it. Okay. So there's there's the E. So there's where, that's what we're starting on. And then after E is G. And G is up a minor third. So third fret. Three frets is a minor third. And then A is a whole step up, so the fifth fret, A. Okay. And then we have uh, the uh, eighth fret, which is A to C, minor third. So we go up three frets and we go to the eighth fret. And then C to D, tenth fret. And this is mirroring the bottom string. So it should match up with the bottom string. If not, you did something wrong. I hope some of you are doing this in pencil. You know who you are. Okay, and then twelfth fret, I should be doing this in pencil. 15th fret, 17th fret, 20th fret, boom, we're done. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Check this out. We're going to bracket on the left-hand side here. I'll do it right now. I'm going to bracket. and I almost wish these fret markers weren't here, but that's all right. I bracketed the 5th fret to the 8th fret. See that? And put P1. For pentatonic number one. All right. Now I'm going to bracket on the other side, on the right side, the uh, seventh fret to the tenth fret. And I'm going to put P2. And you see what's happening there? See the, see the wall that P1 and P2 share? So P1 is America. P2 is Mexico. So P5 is Canada. Actually, actually P1 kind of looks like America. <laughs> P2 doesn't look like Mexico, but P5 kind of looks like Canada. <laughs> I I don't remember Leo. Do you you got that uh, advancing guitar player? Did did he bring this up about <laughs> speaking of making shapes on your neck? Did he bring up somebody did? I can't remember if it was a book or it may have been an article in Guitar Player Magazine where you actually can spell your name on the guitar. So like if I were to spell Tom, I would do T's here maybe. Right? And then O would be, could be like the outside, like. And they basically recommended uh, writing songs based on spelling out your name on the fretboard. Ah, my nose itches again. <sighs> Cheers. Hmm. Story. Uh, I do have a story. I think I may have told it before, but we're not the story yet. I got to finish this. All right, and I gotta scan this. So when I finish this, we'll, I'll scan and say, keep bouncing papers back and forth. All right. So, um, so now we're gonna bracket. Now this is the weird one. This is pentatonic number three. We're gonna bracket from the ninth fret to the thirteenth fret. 
So the bracket for this one's going to kind of touch the, and this is P3. Okay. Now we're going to bracket the 12th on the other side with, with P2. We're going to bracket 12th fret, 12th fret to the 15th fret. Okay. And then um, the on the other side, we're going to bracket from the what did, let's see what fret would that be? 14th fret to the 17th fret, and there's our P5. Okay. And we can also bracket the second fret on this side to the fifth fret, and there's P5 again. And this is the big picture I want you to see is look, they just start repeating. They just keep repeating. Every 12 frets, these scales are going to repeat. And we'll do one more on the on the on the this side over here. We're going to do um, let's see, what would that be? 17th fret to the 20th fret. And that would be P1 all over again. All right, so there's the big picture. This is everything. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, we did each of these scales individually, so if you're just joining us for the first time, if you go back to what lesson was that? Uh, let's see. Um, what's the first one on pentatonic scale? Lesson number 93, so this is 101. So we've done eight lessons on this so far. And it took me a while to get going. I think I spent three lessons on pentatonic number one, which makes sense because I think it's the best one. And it's the most used one. And I have a few examples of ideas and songs that use pentatonic number one. Um, I'm going to give you, uh, here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do another text thing. Okay, and this is going to be homework. <laughs> Oops, homework. Um, e minor, uh, minor, E, G, A, B, D, and then D minor, D, F, G, A, C. All right. <laughs> On the fly. <laughs> so this is homework. You can save this for the weekend if you want. If you want to, you can post post it. But do do this with those and try to find the shapes. You can bracket the shapes and everything. But you're you're going to have to find. Now I can tell you right now, P1 for E minor is going to be in the open position and also the twelfth fret. D minor it's going to be at the tenth fret. So if you know that. D minor, pentatonic number one is a 10th fret. You should be able to find all the others. Oh, somebody's got a question. New post on CGP. Oh, okay, cool. I do not have any seven string guitars uh, in my guitar arsenal. Um, nice. Okay, uh, okay, we'll be up tonight. Oh, I'll check those out, Bruce. Bruce is building me a cigar box guitar. That's what CBG stands for. And it's literally a guitar neck mounted to a cigar box. And he's putting a pickup in there. I think we've just I think we decided on did we decide on a soap bar? Or we decided on something that I forget. Was it just a humbucker? I can't remember now. Soap bar would be great, but I'm, we I don't remember. Anyway. Um and I do not, but the only reason I can imagine having for having a seven string guitar is to be able to do like low even like heavier low stuff. Um, and maybe if I was like a performing metal guitar player, I would have one because I would want to be able to do low stuff and then solo. Uh, but I use the, my, the Telecaster up there, the, the, it's copper. It looks brown, but it's really kind of a, it's kind of a coppery color. Um, sparkle copper, I think. Is it sparkle? I think it's sparkly. Um, that is a baritone and it's got a humbucker in it. I have a baritone, uh, a uh, Dan Electro baritone that Alex has, um, but technically it's mine, <laughs> but I haven't had it in years. Uh, yes, I, I, I actually, <laughs> I'm like, 
uh, the guy, the composer for Apex Legend, was over the other night for we 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 uh, we were both batching it, so we get, we ordered some barbecue and uh, and uh, had some barbecue and bourbon night, and so uh, he he we were looking at those things. Uh, I, I wouldn't have I, I wouldn't know how to store it. I have seen them where they actually the neck bends, so I think they most of them probably the neck neck does collapse so that you can travel with it but i can't imagine you look it up um oh it okay good leo yeah that's exactly right i'm pretty sure that yeah i don't know if i've ever seen one full one up but i i i, I think i remember i have a vague memory of that yeah a sting actually plays one um he did a whole record with it i think um and that's kind of my i mean it's basically a lute with a bunch of lower strings so you can kind of play bass uh this thing actually a lute, like I said yesterday, is tuned kind of like a guitar um, with a capo at the fifth or third fret. So it's a G, G, C, F, B flat, D, G, if it were perfectly tuned. So this would be an a, a C minor chord. So this is, but this is technically an eight course lute. Um, so I change. Oh, we change guitars, so I have to sit. Oh, you know what? Well, I'm <laughs> wasting everyone's time. Let me scan this thing. All right, let's see. Let's, see. let's scan this. <clears throat> Grab this cumbersome software. It's so PC-based, it's awful. <laughs> Sorry. Auto scan. Yes, scan. Are you sure? Yes. Are you really, really sure? Click. Yes. But really, are you sure? <laughs> just eight software that does that. Um, but uh, I went ahead, got, I got the eight course because I was afraid there'd be times where I needed like a note to get down in the range of a guitar. So that's E down here. Oh, see, I, okay, this thing's got a little window here in front of me. I can't see. Um, so it actually goes down to a note below a classical guitar. So that's a D, F, and then G. And then from there. But it makes it pretty tough to to um, uh, to play. I'm just going to put all pence all the time. Uh, yep, there it is. Okay. Close. Quit. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Are you really sure you want to quit? Yes. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, response above. Let's see. Um, uh, Bruce. Yeah, the, but yeah, so we were, but this, this obviously doesn't have the, um, how do you say it? Is it ther, Therobo? Therobo. Yeah, there's a guy that on YouTube, he's really good classical guitarist, and he plays all these, you know, he does videos about all these instruments. It's pretty cool. He's, he's a very good player. The interesting thing about lute that I didn't know until I actually got one was that the east, the top string, not the E string, but the top string is a single note, but all the others are doubles. And the thing I really like about this is, you know, these. Is you got, it's almost like a nylon 12 string because you got octaves. kind of nylon 12 string vibe that you can't normally get. So I do, I have used a pick on single note stuff just because I think the sound is really cool. But yeah, it's interesting that the top note is, oh, oh, Bruce was, oh, Bruce was saying, uh, Bruce, 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 yeah. Oh, it's not too late. You know, Bruce, maybe we should go with a humbucker on that just so that it doesn't make too much noise. Um, yeah, if you've got a humbucker, go for it, but don't, don't go out of your way. Single coil is fine too. Single coil is definitely more vibey, always. But the trouble with single coil is if you're sitting in front of a computer screen, um, it can be kind of buzzy. And I have gates and everything that I can put on stuff. Uh, but if I want to let something ring out, either two things either happen. The hum, you can hear the hum, or the gate shuts off the ring out. <laughs> so it's this trade-off. 
and they, they have software I can get. Okay, we're going to change guitars again so we can all. Okay, so I scanned that. Um, let me go to the let me go to the Discord and upload it. Uh, okay, I'm copying a link too while I'm there. Okay, so it if you just if you're new to the Discord, and I'm going to post a link here in a second. Uh, Tom bookmarks. It's it's the, there's a tab. It's uh, Tom Straley's room. It says uh, Tom's bookmarks. And um, that's where I'm going to put this. So I just scanned, and I called it all pence. So it's this. It's now scanned and up on there. So if you want, you can do that. Um, and you, um, and then there's also, uh, you'll see Tom's CGB build and that's Bruce's page basically where he uploads pictures of everything he's working on um, and probably asking me questions that I'm not getting. In fact, you sent me a text the other day and I'm like, dang it, I didn't reply. I'm so sorry, Bruce. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really cool. One of the things that Bruce is doing is that the headstock, I think, yeah, you can see on one of the pictures for, uh, dated July 14th, he's doing, is it Mount Whitney? Is that, is it, are you basing, yeah, you're basing it on your state's, oh, Mount Shasta. Okay, so you're doing Mount Shasta. So he, he's customizing the headstock shape so that it's in the shape of um, the um, uh, mountain that's the biggest in your state, <laughs> which I guess if I were in Indiana, that would be a... <laughs> Fort Wayne, it just be the like, it would just be the silhouette of Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> so, um, but uh, let's see. Oh, Paul, thank you so much. God bless you. That means a lot. It's really funny because the revenue has been down on YouTube, uh, so that helps. Uh, it's it's just I'm not in the fifteen thousand views every. 48 hours, I'm more than 8,000 views every 48 hours. So it's, it's, uh, when I first started doing this, I was, I, it really ramped up my views, which was cool. Um, but the, um, but, so Bruce is doing this really cool, um, oh, okay. Oh, the single coil is passive, so it won't be any much. Okay. Okay, then fine. Let's go with the, stick with the single coil, dude. I think that's better. I, the, you gotta go with Vibe over purity on a seat on a cigar box guitar seriously and then bruce and i are also talking about doing maybe another one um uh and then what i will do is i will do an unboxing and then i may do a separate review video of it and so what's funny bruce remember you guys we were talking about you saw my uh chromatic dulcimer that i got and um also uh the the <laughs> The Bode Psaltery, which I now have two bows, so I can play it like that if I want. I tried the other day. It was kind of cool. Um, but the, um, the that maker is in Nashville, Indiana, and his company, I think it was Mountain Made Dulcimers, which is really funny because I'm like, I'm from Indiana, and I think the highest in elevation in Indiana is 800 feet. <laughs> there ain't no mountains in Indiana. Okay, I'm going to the Wikipedia page right now. Indiana... <laughs> Wikipedia. Okay, let's see what we got. Highest elevation. I could be wrong. I think Pasadena sits at like 800 feet. Uh, elevation, 700 feet. It's even lower. Oh, highest elevation, sorry. 1257, and that's Hoosier Hill, which is in Franklin Township, Wayne County, northwest of... Let's see if I can see where... Oh, it's oh way over there. So it's almost Ohio. So I guess it's uphill to get to Ohio. <laughs> it's just on the very east, eastern part of Indiana. So I just think it's funny that that... Uh, uh, I have never been to French Lake. I really want... I, I want to go. It's expensive. Uh, that's where... That's where... Uh, uh, Larry Bird is from. <laughs> I love... <laughs> sorry. Scratching my nose again. I'm a big Cheers fan. I mean, like... Literally, Cheers is always on my playlist, uh, and now it's on Hulu, so I have to I have to subscribe to Hulu to see it. And I think I'm going to have to switch over to the Peacock now because I think they're going to take it off of Hulu at some point. But I'm watching on Hulu with ads, which isn't bad. I don't mind the ads at all. Kind of reminds me of being a kid, 
And I, I, you know, hey, I make a portion of my living off of ads, YouTube and everything. So I'm always happy when somebody plays an ad. I'm like, oh, good. Somebody's getting paid for this. Uh, but but Woody's always making fun. Like, he's from Hanover, Indiana, which he really is from Hanover, Indiana. And uh, he went to college with Mike Pence, of all people. Um, and they both went to Hanover at the same time. And it, I played there. And I'm wondering if by chance that they were there when I played there in Hanover. I told you that story about playing at Hanover College and it rained out the outdoor concert. So they brought the outdoors indoors. Remember they, the, the kids there were really on top of it within three hours. They turned, they turned um, their cafeteria into a forest with a stream and a waterfall. It was like really, really, really cool. And so they still had the dance outdoors. It was pretty amazing. They did that in three hours while we were setting up. I watched them do it. It was like, and th that was with no plans. Like they didn't, I don't think they had, okay, well, last year we did this because it rained. You know, I don't think, yeah, I think it was just like they made it up as they went and it, it totally worked. But Cheers is like one of, is this my favorite sitcom of all time? And um, I, uh, um, uh, I, I, um, Love it when Woody makes fun of, oh, yeah, that's what we say about the guys from French Lick. In fact, uh, you know, they have jokes about French Lick and, and uh, what's his name? Um, Kevin McHale, who's actually on the show at least twice and is, does a great job. Feels completely natural. Usually when you have people like they've had a lot of people that are, are like playing themselves on that show, mostly politicians. And they, they you know, they come off as they managed to get a very natural reaction out of it, but Kevin McHale actually has lines. And uh, at one point, Ke uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin McHale tells a, a joke that he heard from Larry Bird about the, <laughs> well, how many people, you know, like from Hanover, does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> and Woody's all offended. He goes, I heard it a little different. <laughs> El Pasadena is 863. Oh, thank you for looking that up. That's funny. Yeah, so... I think where Indian, where I lived in Indianapolis, I was about the same elevation in Pasadena. But in Pasadena, you're looking at Mount Wilson, which is, I think the elevation of Mount Wilson is around 6,000 feet. And I had neighbors that would bike to the top and back every Saturday. It's like, what, are you an idiot? you want to die? Um, highway 65, exactly. 65 is one of the most boring highways. Um, so this is what we did today. Okay. This is... Ooh, look, I'm covering up those. I didn't know that that would happen. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's not covering up. It's just disappearing because it's white. Oh, that's a that's an optical illusion right there, right? Look at that. <sighs> Disappeared, and then it appears like magic. Oh, so that's how they do it with mirrors. Um, so basically what I did was I took, on every string, I took the note A, C, D, E, G, that over here, oh, over here, this one here, uh, that's the A minor pentatonic scale. And we wrote every note. We went string by string. So if you watch this video from the beginning, we went down every string. And we came up with this, and it just maps out all five pentatonics. And you can see P1, P2, P3. And again, those are my names. Don't don't get in an argument on a forum. <laughs> no, that's te technically pentatonic four. <laughs> Tom Straley said so. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> gonna, they're going to cancel, cancel me. on. <laughs> well, you said that's a P4. And really what that is, is that's a A form based. And, uh, you know, I didn't talk about this. In fact, we could do this too. We could go through, I could put, the other thing you could do is you could redo this with colored pens and you could do, maybe for the A's, you could put blue letters, like, cause A would also work for the blues. Uh, so all the A's on here would be blues. Uh, the B, the, uh, would be, could be blue notes and you could do maybe red notes for the, I could have done it that way, but I didn't. Oh, actually I couldn't have done it. I don't have colored markers, so never mind. Um, uh, but normally what I would do is I would kind of go through this. And now that I've scanned it, I can totally mess it up. But I would go through and put X's through all the A's. And I can re-up this now that I've done, done this. Let's see. I think I got them all. Sometimes I miss one. But see, I put X's through all the A's. And those are all the, the minor roots. And then you could go through and like circle all the C's. So if I went through and circled all the C's, I don't know if I could circle. And when you do this, this is when you start to see, and oh, here's another thing you could do. You could go through and start to find the, um, 
the caged shapes, okay? So here's all the C's, sir, okay? So I'm gonna rescan this and post this, um, opening up the scanning software. <laughs> it's obviously PC-based. Uh, and, <laughs> sorry, I'm such a Mac snob scanner. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you really, really sure? Yes, I'm really, really sure. Now, I know you said you're really sure, but are you sure you want to scan this document? Uh, okay. All right. We should have a, a scanning sip, Gary. Maybe that should be a rule. If I'm scanning, we all take a sip. It's more of a fill in the time, kind of like the uh, leaving the room sip, which I never do. Um, exit. Although I could leave the room right now to go get my Loudon, which is in our living room. Exit. Okay, yeah. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. <laughs> Save as PDF file. Are you sure? Okay. 1.1. Uh, I'll just call it that. Okay. Save. All right. Quit. Sure you want to quit? <laughs> Stupid. All right. Where? Okay. So I'm going back to my Tom's bookmarks. Is that right? No. Yeah. And I'm going to upload this one now that I've marked all the, and I should have written on there that, oops, hang it. There we go. There we are. All right. Sting bat. Who's sting bat? All right. So there's all, the, it's 1.1 is what it says. That will, um, so let me do this in this order. We're losing people. I'm losing people. Dropping off like flies. Okay. It's 29 viewers right now. Chat revenue. Yeah, thanks, Paul, for that. I appreciate that. 9 a.m. Yikes. What are you talking about? Um, so I am thinking about moving my lesson to 9 a.m. Is that the first you're hearing of it, Ed? Ed, did you go back and look at all the, the old chat? So, yeah, I am thinking about uh, moving my uh, live stream from starting at 9 instead of 11. I, I may move it again to 10. If it I have to get my coffee. I don't think I'll need to set my alarm, but I probably will just in case. I don't ever sleep till 9 o'clock. And I'll, my, my one concern is that it might make me not get good sleep because I'll be thinking, oh, I got to get up. I got to get up. I got to get up. And you, know that, you know that routine, right? Um, so we'll see. But my, I think Monday we'll try 9 a.m. and see how, how that goes. I think I can get more viewers that way. I think more Europeans, Germany. I'm not getting a lot of German viewers. And the, and the thing is I have a lot of German subscribers and a lot of Australian and Japanese subscribers. So I think I would, you know, if there's a Night Owls in, in, in uh, Australia and Japan, I think they will. Pepper, are you, yeah, I'll still do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm, I'm ha you know, again, I'm, I'm like, part of the reason I want to move it up earlier is because I, off I very rarely get work done before we start this. And uh, mainly because I can't, my, my process is such a creative process that it's real easy to get lost in it and then forget what time it is. Like I've gone literally working all day without eating a meal just having coffee, just because I just my brain is just so focused. Um, and so I don't really ever get to that place before 11 o'clock on, on our lesson days because, um, and I used to work a lot at night. And if I'm working for somebody else and I've got tasks and things I've got to get done, then I will work at night. But if I'm working for myself, it's hard for me to work past midnight and be creative and, and productive. Um, uh, but with sessions, like when people are sending me tracks to write, uh, to, to play on, it's more like get this one done, get this one done, work your way through. Sometimes it's a million tracks. And so it's just you just got to start keep chipping away, chipping away, and you think you're never going to get it done. Um, and, you know, that, that's true of any job. You know what I'm talking about. And so uh, I feel like that that it's hard to get into a creative space when um, I'm having to um, – I can't. I can't get my day started until 11 o'clock, and then that's with you guys, and then we finish at 1 o'clock. So, all right, so I've got a story, I think. Uh, I think I probably told this story. I'm not sure. Gary, what are you saying? Oh, the command. Gary's posting the command sips. Uh, it's a question. Homework is using pet one for you might go from there. No, homework is to do what we just did. 
to make to to print some more of these sheets, okay, and uh, find all the so go find all the e's, g's, a's, b's, and d's on each string, and do so you do so you you'll end up with all of the E minor pentatonics lined up on here, and then take another sheet and do all the D minor pentatonics or all the all the the D minor pentatonic find all the notes in the D minor pentatonic scale uh, on your fretboard, and then those scales will show up. So if you want to, um, let's see. <laughs> Sterist, Sterist at thine computer in utter, you mean like this right now? So I guess this is a simple offense with me looking at your list there, Gary. Okay. All right. Well, that works out. So as long as it's good with pepper, that's all I really care about. <laughs> all right, so um, you can you can interpret that as sarcasm or serious. That's uh, totally up to you, Pepper. Uh, more nylon. Oh, you you want me to do more nylon stuff? Huh. Okay. Well, we're still. Well, it's true. We are kind of technically done with Pentax. Although I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. We're gonna. I, you know what? I would suggest doing that homework before. Friday, because I think Friday we may do do this, um, and then then the thing is you can keep this up and you can look at it and you can, you know, practice the scales and then start going between the scales and start to see. You can also, if you want, you can uh, take what I did the first time, um, and the first upload of this without the circles and X's, and you can find all of the the um, chord shapes uh, of the. In fact, let me do that right now. Check this out. I got. I got to tell a story though, don't I? Okay, so I'm going to print this up. And then, um, all right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to circle the um, I'm going to circle the the shapes the the um, the chord shapes that are found on each of the positions if it's going to print are you going to print come on what's going on am I out of paper no I'm not out of paper just taking a minute to to get the information I guess all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print up uh, this sheet without the circles and X's, and I'm going to circle, I'm going to kind of uh, show you the shapes, and, uh, where's my, oh, here it is. Okay. So in other words, pentatonic number, well, we didn't, also another thing we didn't do, I'm um, sorry, here and here. Another thing we didn't do, I didn't bracket pentatonic number four right there. Okay, I'm gonna do that now. So in open position, we do have an open pentatonic scale there, right? Pentatonic number four. So really, you, there's only five scales on there, but um, so the C shape. I'm gonna uh, let's see. How do I do this? Really ugly. Uh, G shape. Yeah, this isn't really working very well. Yeah, I'm not liking this, but here's what I'm doing. So the the like here you can see the C shape, maybe the A shape you can see right there, the three there's the G shape, but it's not, this is not, there's a better way to do that. It would be with color pens or something like that where you can see, oh, there's the C chord and there's the, or the C shape and there's the A shape and I'm just going to check that. <laughs> okay. So that was a fail. Um, let's see. All right. Um, we're not on stuff. Yeah. Pepper would probably appreciate that too. Um, 
Yes, you could do that too if you want to. Instead of writing a putting a black thing, you put A C. That's not a bad idea at all. Um, that's a great way to uh, kind of hammer home those notes up and down the fretboard. Um, totally, totally fine with that. I think that's a good idea instead of dots. Yeah. Oh, and Bruce, that's what you did. Yeah. See, that was smart. Um, <laughs> sometimes I was I, I would have done that, but I didn't know how well it would have shown up. Um, this I, I knew that this would show up pretty well here. But you can totally do that. And I might maybe do that with the homework. Maybe do the homework, um, at least do the E minor pentatonic by Friday if you can. And then, uh, or not, we're going to do it together. Maybe do the D minor. I think I'll do E minor on Friday. Um, and E minors are, you know, very common, you know, pentatonic. It's, I mean, for one thing, it's, That's just a pattern that's repeated on every string set. That's what I did. Um, so what I did, uh, so I do it in, uh, in A. Start there and hammer on the, the uh, pinky on the eighth fret. Like that. Now I'm on the second string. So first string, five, eight, five, eight. And then back to eight. I'm sorry, back to five. Eight. So we have four notes here and four notes here. So it's an eight note phrase. It can't be eight notes at the end because we ran out of strings, but. Uh, but that's Yes. Oh, are you? I meant you are making us pump more nylon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a, not a bad idea. The top ten things to work on. Uh, top ten, ten. Top ten things to know as an electric guitar player. Top ten things to know as an acoustic guitar player. Top thing, ten things to know as a classical guitar player. I don't know if that I'm qualified to do that list. And I don't know if I could do top ten. I could do top three. And I would get the thing about doing it. The smaller the list, the more arguments I'm going to get. It's like you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that. At least with top ten, I can mention everything. <laughs> and you go, oh, I think number seven should be number four. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know, to which I say, do your own video. <laughs> do your own blank video. Okay, story time. All right, I probably told this story. I'm not sure, but I did email. I did text it to myself. I still. I really can't bring myself to tell the clown joke because then I'd have to change the adult ratings on this to make it for adults only. But someday I'll tell the clown joke. Uh, but <clears throat> so, uh, so I'm a, a, the only reason I thought of this story is because I, um, uh, sorry, I got to check something here real quick. I'm expecting some files to work on. <laughs> Uh, no, not yet. Okay, so um, uh, we were talking about when I somebody asked me about the first time I led worship at Shepherd Church, and uh, uh, back in 2000, so I was brought there to be a guitar player, but also part-time worship leader. And the first year, I only did it once, and I was actually starting to look for other jobs. Uh, but that one time I did it was, I think. It might have been the first week of September or something. It was very, very hot that week. I remember, I think we went, we were in Michigan the week before or something. Um, and um, so the Shepherd has, would be, it used to be five services. We're three now, but it's because we built this giant sanctuary. So we had a 1,400 seat sanctuary, then we did five services every week, every weekend. And now we have a 3,500 seat sanctuary. We, of course, not doing anything right now, but um, we were doing three services, pretty much full. Um, and uh, so um, I was, so I had to do five services, which is fine. And I had the band, great band, pretty much some of the musicians are the same. Pee Wee and Michiko are still there. Sheila's still there. 
um, and then singers and all that. You know, we and we did the two Saturday services. You know, the first time I led worship, like I said, it was you know totally fine. Dudley preached and he did the first two services, and then uh, we did this first service, which was on Sunday, which was eight thirty, and then a ten o'clock service. All five services, I had to sit on stage, which was a drag, but. Uh, they, he, Dudley always wanted the worship leader to be sitting on stage, uh, for the sermon. So, so at this point, I've heard the sermon now three and a half times and just, a, you know, about 20 minutes into the sermon, I hear, is he okay? I hear Dudley say, is he okay? And I'm like, going, okay, I've heard this sermon three times now. I don't remember him saying, is he going to be okay in the sermon any, anywhere? So I'm kind of looking, what do you? I'm like, kind of wake up because I was dozing off a little bit. Uh, Joshua, the guy I was subbing for, would actually fall asleep up there. We would we would laugh about how many times we could catch Joshua falling asleep on stage. Uh, he would be like one of those, you know, <laughs> nodding off. And uh, so um, they uh, he was he was referencing. He was talking to someone. There, oh, I look out in the congregation and. And on the floor, this old man was lying down on the floor, and people were kind of gathering around him. And apparently, paramedics 911 had been called. And Dudley said, "Is he going to be okay?" And you know, they said, "Well, yeah, you know." And so Dudley went out there. Um, I think he had a handheld mic or grabbed a handheld mic and took it with him because normally he would be on a lapel. And now that you know, they use the microphone on the side of the cheek, and that doesn't count as me touching my face. Sorry, can't take a sip for that. Um, and so. Uh, um, he walks down there and he's he's talk, talking. No, his lapel mic. He just had his lapel mic, so he just walked down there. But he turns to me and he says, "Tommy, would you play a song?" Uh, well, you know, he prayed for the guy and he said, "Tommy, he he didn't want to keep preaching while the paramedics were working on him. He didn't want that distraction. Dudley hates distractions, so he just was like, I'll sit down, you lead a song, and then I'll pick up when you're done." Okay. The crazy thing is Joshua, if he was up there, he doesn't play an instrument. He would have to go up there and lead instrumental. But I, you know, I'm I'm kind of a self-contained worship leader. I oftentimes would lead worship with just me and the guitar. And so I got my, I picked up my Taylor, the Taylor that's hanging right there, that guitar. I picked that up and uh, I, I got up and I started singing one of the songs from the set. Um, I knew they had the slides for, I didn't want to do any surprises. And I certainly didn't need to make my life any more difficult. So I had the chart right there. And, um, oh, sorry, Bruce. Um, that's my bad. And, um, well, we can wait for Bruce to go get more water. You want me to stop and let you go get more water? Hey, Richard. Uh, hey, Richard, I might start on Monday. I might start going at 9 a.m. instead of 11 a.m. California time, just so you know. Um, for anybody just joining us, I think I'm going to try to do that on Monday if I can. We'll see if it works. Um, and then um, might have lower viewers for, for a couple couple times but so I get up and I start playing a song and I can't remember what song it was but I started playing a song and um and the band's in the back and they suddenly hear me singing and they're like what <laughs> and they run out they're like peering around the corner and I'm like trying to kind of the congregation I'm having them stand up you know and saying and we're just trying to kind of you know, they're at least praying with it and staying with the guy and everything so you know and the paramedics show up we have EMTs we have multiple EMTs at every service and because so many people on staff, there's so many, you know, different people in, in we have policemen and firemen and all sorts of people, you know, uh, in, in, that work at the, uh, the, the volunteer at the church. So um, uh, the band kind of peers around the corner and I'm aware that they're probably going to be doing that. So I'm looking at them going, stay where you are. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm trying to sing and tell them to just stay, say, you know, don't come out because I figured Dudley was going to want to come back up and preach. And I didn't, you know. Uh, so the guy apparently had taken his blood pressure medicine without food, and they carted him out on a on a uh, stretcher. And then Dudley got up, finished his thing, and then band came back up, and we did the closing song. But I, while Dudley's preaching, I go sit back down, and, and Todd Clark, who is one of the pastors, he comes up, kind of comes up to me and says, "Man, I'm glad that didn't happen." Well, in next service, because I would have had to cover, because next service is video service. And so, yeah, the, the last service on Sunday, so Dudley wouldn't have to preach five services, would be a video service, and um, they would, or he would go somewhere else and preach uh, at one of the other campuses. And um, he, um, 
he would preach. I mean, uh, then they would show a video and there would be a pastor there just in case something happened. And Todd was that guy. And he was like, oh, I'm glad that didn't happen next service because I'd have to get up and say all sorts of stuff and pray and do all that. And I go, yeah. And so, so anyway, it was like this guy almost died. I mean, I don't know if he died. Well, no, he did not die. He actually was fine. But, but I always say, uh, I always say uh, that uh, the first time I led worship at Shepherd, two people died because the next service, I'm leading the song, and I think I was doing a song, from, you know, again, keep in mind this is the early 2000s, so it was a song called He Reigns. He Reigns Through All Me. I can't remember. Uh, he Reigns Through All Me. Anyway, it was a great song. I can't remember who did it originally. It was probably a Maranatha song or something because that's who I worked for before. I worked for Shepherd. And, um, <laughs> my kids are sitting in the front row on my right and my wife is singing with us and uh, I look over and all of a sudden the paramedics are coming in and there's a lady right behind my kids who literally passed out and she forgot to take her heart medicine that morning and she had a heart attack and died right there behind my kids my kids were like seven let's see this would have been 2000 Dang, this was 2002. Have I told this story before, by the way? Uh, 2002. So Emma, Alex was born in 92. So he was 10. Jack would have been 8. And Emma would have been 5. And then the lady dropped. I'm not laughing. At, I'm just like, the kids, I mean, they, it's just like they had no idea. I mean, when they took that lady out, she was blue. And, of course, then Todd did have to come and... Uh, um, Todd did have to come in and cover up for, get cover up for the service because Dudley was long gone at that point. And it happened during worship. So, you know, of course, I prayed for the lady and then Todd came up and prayed for the lady. And once they carted her off, I think I played one more song and then we went to bed. I can't really remember. <laughs> okay. So then this was right on the one-year anniversary of 9-11. And Shepard did this amazing display in the parking lot they closed the parking lot and they they set up balloons like these uh weighted helium balloons and it was a miracle that you know didn't blow away but um they had three thousand balloons with the people's names and their family members and what flight they were on and it's like so you could walk around and pray for them and they had them in the shape of the and the size of the two towers laying down. So they had this display, and this was during the week after I led worship. Um, and I wanted to go see that, so we drove, I drove up from Pasadena by myself, and I went to see it. And plus I had to go to church for something, and one of the pastors, Bruce, he goes, oh, it's the killer worship leader. <laughs> I was like, really? And so I'm, I'm walking around, the, the, the display, and I'm looking at it, and you can kind of walk amongst the balloons, or you can walk around. I was walking around the outside, and I came around the corner, and there was this guy, old guy named Zeke. He was in the choir. He was really old, and he had one of those canes that had a seat on it, and it was like 110 degrees. It was like, like today, and it was really hot, and I came around the corner <clears throat> of the display of the balloons, and Zeke is sitting on his chair, and I'm not—I'm 25 feet from him. I'm not anywhere near him. And I said, "Oh, hi, Zeke." And he says hi, and like literally two seconds later, he falls off that stool and breaks his hip. I just saw him fall. I didn't know he broke his hip, right? I saw him fall, and I—I I was like, "Oh, Zeke, are you okay?" So I go over to see Zeke, and he's like, "And I'm like, what?" He goes, and "I'm like, I'm sorry. What are you saying?" He goes. I hear, it burns, and I'm realizing his bare arm is on, he's laying on his side, and his bare arm is touching this black concrete, and it is burning the dickens out of his arm. I mean, it's just like, I'm starting to smell it. It's like literally second-degree burns on his arm. So I take off my T-shirt, right, and I put it under Zeke, and, and somebody over here is calling 911, and I didn't even have a phone back then. And so I'm like, I got to go to the office. I'll go to the office, Zeke, and, and, and make sure, you know, to see if I can get you some water or something like that. And I'm walking towards the church, the off church offices, and the executive pastor, the boss of everybody, walks out. And he sees his worship leader, the guy that just led worship on Saturday and Sunday, walking towards the church with his shirt off, <laughs> totally bare chested. And, and Tim, it's Tim, and Tim is like, 
uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, Zeke needs, he goes, why aren't you wearing a shirt? And I went, oh, sorry. I put it under Zeke because the concrete was burning him. And he goes, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. I'm like, oh, geez. That was my first week leading worship at Shepherd. Before that, I was just a guitar player. It's so funny because no one really knew me at Shepherd. You know, I was just a guitar player. You know, this guy. that guy <laughs> and uh uh and then every weekend after everybody knew me as tom not the killer worship leader thank you bruce but uh no, not bruce Ringrose, but uh, bruce the best bruce um but they uh yeah it was pretty funny um uh, they uh everybody but it was really weird now to all of a sudden be in this mega church where everyone knew your name and it was like <laughs> i got really good at saying hey you <laughs> I still, re I was, I was, I've always been, been bad with names, but now I had an excuse. It was like, you don't remember my name? He's, I said, well, everybody knows my name, but I can't remember anyone else's name. I remember Zeke's name. Zeke's no longer with us, but uh, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty cool memorial. Uh, they did something like that every year, you know, for a while. Every every uh, week of September 11th, they would do some crazy, you know, display. In uh, uh, Shepherd Church until this year would have one of the biggest and best fireworks displays in all of LA County. People, we'd get 60, 70,000 people showing up to see our fireworks display every year. And it was completely free, and they'd have games for the kids, totally free. Uh, also, you know, jumping things, and all restaurants would come and set up all around. It was, they'd shut off, they'd shut down the main street. Uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, Shepherd's is a really, really good church for community, you know, last, last year's theme, 2019's theme was I love LA. And, uh, they put new flooring in both of our fire stations nearby our church, all new flooring we paid for. And then the police station nearby, uh, Devonshire division, they put, they gave them a mobile pu public address system so they could do outreaches. Uh, so yeah, the church is really, really super involved. Anytime the city wants to use any office for any, I mean, any, uh, space for for meetings or events. The cities, you know, they have a great relationship with the mayor of LA. Um, they really try to they really try to keep that going. Uh, they they sailed through pr approval process for building the new building, where normally anybody else would have had to jump through so many hoops. Every every step of the process was met with very little resistance. Um, so it's I I'll try to Dan, Diane if you want to. Oh, good. I didn't say that story before. You want? I can tell you a story about Shepherd building a new building if you want to remind me at some point. That doesn't really, it's not so personal, but uh, it's, But I really like being part of the church. It's great to see. I mean, I think they baptize a thousand people every year. We usually baptize 350 people every, every August in the ocean, but we weren't able to do that this year. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I should go to Church of the Striper costume next week, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> no one would notice. <laughs> uh, listen, we get we get some pretty interesting people in our church. It is LA after all. And I did see Striper perform at Calvary Chapel back in the eighties, because <laughs> Calvary Chapel was it Friday night or Saturday night concerts in Costa Mesa. It was a big deal. Man, we would we would go down there. I mean, I I can't remember ever having good seats because it was packed. Uh, you could see some pretty big. Christian artists back in the day, so. But we are we are actually going. We're going to be at this weekend. We're doing it. We're taking all sorts of protocols. We're doing all sorts of, um, you know, social distancing. We're grouping people in family groups. We have outdoor seating. We have. We're going to have five venues besides the main sanctuary with distancing. Um, masks are going to be required. They're going to hand sanitizer when you come in. We're not doing temperatures. Uh, we're not doing that. There may be a station where if you want to go get your temperature taken, you can, I guess, but I can't think of why you would do that um, and unless you didn't feel well, but then why would you go? That would See, that's one of the things that's going to come out of this. I think there's definitely some, you know, people resist the term new normal, but I do think there's some things where we've gotten a little bit carried away. Um, one of them is like, I got to go to work. I feel like crap. I got a fever, but I got to go to work. That is, should go away. I mean, 
and I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And it, with me, it's hard because if I wake up Sunday morning and I've got 102 fever, it's really hard to get a guitar player to sub for me in an hour. And especially if they're rehearsing in 45 minutes. So that's, all, you know, I am guilty of going in. But that's one of those times where you would, if you do, if you're sick and you're, and you're going to work, wear a mask. I mean, I, I've been to Japan and, and Korea, South Korea, and um, that's the norm. I always thought when I saw people in Asia wearing masks, it was because they were germaphobes. I thought, man, Asian people are germaphobes. And it wasn't. No, they were just being kind to their neighbors because they live on top of each other, you know, in Japan. Tokyo especially. Most of what I saw in Japan was countryside, so it wasn't like that. But, but in Tokyo, it's very, very, very compact. And uh, same with Seoul. And so everybody, if you're sick, you don't want to get your neighbor sick, so you wear a mask on the, on the subway and everything. So uh, it's just consideration. So that's going to probably be a new normal thing, too. Uh, you know, will handshakes go away? I don't think so. Will hugs go away? No, no. I, I think people will be doing more elbow and more fist pops. You know, I, I was kind of going that way anyway. I'm not a germaphobe. In fact, I kind of invite germs. Uh, my, my boss at church, she's a germaphobe, I guess. Um, uh, she doesn't like touching doorknobs or anything like that. But she's even worried that we're over sanitizing things and everybody wearing masks that the immunities are going to be way down. And I think that's definitely true. I just I'm like, yeah, I just lick doorknobs because <laughs> I'm like, I want to I want to get exposed. It's like the pediatrician, his first two years of practice, he gets everything and then nothing. He never gets sick again because he's just been exposed to everything. Same thing with school teachers. Beth, two first year, first two years of Beth taught, she got so sick so often. Okay, so but I think Friday I'm going to do 11. So don't don't worry about Friday. Friday is going to be normal. If you log in at 11, I maybe I'll make a post on that. But uh, I'm going to next week. I'm going to start experimenting with the nine o'clock time and see if I can make it happen. It's good to force me to kind of get up and at them. You know, a lot of times I'll sit and read the the news or lay in bed and read the news um, or you know read read. Uh, open up a Bible app or something like that and be reading in bed, and, you know, just kind of being lazy because um, I don't have to get up. But this will force me to kind of make sure that I'm up. And the main thing is I got to get this going. This is the most important thing. I've got to go to this church, St. Arbucks. St. Huh? Arbucks. I don't know where I heard that. Yes, the population density. I haven't been to China yet, but they do the same thing. They wear. You see a lot of people wearing masks in China, and it's because they're just because they're sick, and they but they have to go to work still. Um, so that, I think I think there'll be some new normals, and I don't think they're necessarily any bad normals. Oh, here's a new another new normal that I don't think is bad at all, and it's totally fine in California. Obviously, it can't work everywhere, um, but I, I I kind of felt like. Um, you know, all the restaurants now have all this outdoor seating. I think if I were to, if I were building a new restaurant in LA today, um, I would set it up so I have, you know, if I were in a strip mall or something or on a street side, I think I would, I would pull the, you know, pull the, pull back from the street and have a lot of outdoor seating um, and very little indoor seating and the kitchen would be indoors, but mostly outdoor seating and maybe go out onto the sidewalk with tables and umbrellas, which is what everybody's, everybody's doing. Um, I think that's going to be far more common in places where it makes sense. Um, I've been to Europe many times and France is like that. Um, and they have awnings. So if it's raining, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't snow. It gets cold in France, but they have the heaters. Pasadena is like that. Pasadena is even more like that now. They've even gotten rid of two lanes in Old Town Pasadena, so now the restaurants can come further out. Italy is like that. There is by far more seating outdoors in Southern Europe. Barcelona is very much like that. Uh, I'm, okay, I, we ate at a different restaurant twice a day in Barcelona, and I'm pretty sure that at least half the time we were sitting outdoors. I mean, the weather was amazing in Barcelona, and that was November, um, but uh, or I should say Barcelona. Uh, but I, I think um, <laughs> in Europe, it's that way because they've had a thousand years of plagues. And they probably went, after after like the first five or six plagues, they probably went, you know, 
the people that were sitting outside are still with us, but the people that sat inside at the restaurants, they're no longer with us. So, so that's probably why all the restaurants in Europe, particularly in Southern Europe, I wouldn't say that's true in, well, Austria. No, we didn't sit outside in Austria. Not much. Uh, but France, definitely. London, it rained so much. I'm trying to think. No, we pretty much sat inside in London. So I can't think of any restaurant we sat outside in London. Although we never really got rained on except once in London. And, like, it was, we were right at Big Ben. We were crossing the bridge next to Big Ben, and I saw the storm come in. I'm like, uh, and it was coming in, and it looked really angry. I said, we got to get going. We were halfway over that bridge. What's the name of that bridge? Um, sorry. Let me pull up. Google. Bum, bum, bum. I, I got on my Google Maps, I've got all these, you know, marks of where. Let's see, are they actually putting it? Trafalgar Square, where is Big Ben, right there. Okay. Oh, Westminster Bridge. Okay. So, yeah, it makes sense. It's right by Westminster Abbey. So we were halfway across Westminster Bridge. I don't know where we were going. I don't think there was anything really over there to see. There's a big train yard, Waterloo Station. But um, And I said, we need to turn around. And we started turning around. And we didn't even get back to Big Ben before we were overtaken by this storm. And the wind was so strong, it literally turned our umbrellas inside out. I'd never seen that happen. And both of our umbrellas went clink, clink. And mine was unredeemable. And Beth's was fixable. And it was like we brought these umbrellas with us, and we had to buy new umbrellas. But I mean, there are, umbrellas are a necessary necessity in London. Um, but yeah, it was, and we went from from the rain. We went um, into uh, we we just come out of Westminster Abbey, so we'd already taken the tour, and so we went into the bookstore. And I don't think I ever been that way it, it almost was like I had fallen into a pool with all my clothes on <laughs> it was just miserable and we did we walk there I think we walked there all the way there we walked so much uh, we did train when the, the first day we did we did take the tube the tube to uh, Abbey Road um, the first day we were there I took the boys to Abbey Road Studios um, and then we walked back, and that was a long walk back because we our apartment was in we rented an apartment in uh, Notting Hill, which was a great place to be. Notting Hill is such a beautiful, and right next to Kensington Palace, we were literally across the street from Kensington Palace. Um, yes, thank you, Rich, Richard Larson. Uh, yeah, you know we didn't do the London Eye. It was a, expensive, and I had there were five of us. We London was so expensive. We there were a lot of things we didn't do. I'm. I'm hoping to be there next year, next uh, November, and for work, and uh, um, I will be taking Beth with me. And so when it's just the two of us, I still won't do the London Eye. I just don't, I, you know, just not the thing I would do. I'm more into history. Love West, West, Westminster Abbey. Uh, Parliament would be great to get to a Parliament. Beth did. When we did, uh, Alex and I went to, um, did did Emma go with us? I don't remember now. Alex and Emma and I, I think I, we went, the three of us went to uh, Denmark Street. You know what's on Denmark Street, Richard? No, no, I, yeah, we're, I, Scotland's on the short list. Oh, hey, Audio Murphy, good to see you, man. Dennis hates playing Apex. Yeah, uh, yeah, Battle Royale's not, not everybody's thing. Um, no, we didn't do the boat ride on Thames. We did the one on the uh, the uh, the Seine. Uh, the Thames would be a nice one. The Seine is great because you got so many great bridges. Really touring all the bridges. Um, oh wow, you lived there in the seventies. That must have been crazy. That must have been something else. Yes, Richard knows what Denmark Street is. So Denmark Street is is the street. It's a very short street with all the guitar shops on it. In fact, they have a guitar store there. It's not Tom's Guitars. Uh, I forget which one, but that's where the Stones recorded their first album was in the studio in the basement. I don't think that studio's still there. Maybe it is. I can't remember. We didn't do Stonehenge. No. I, Stonehenge is a long drive to see something that... 
it's a bit out of town. It's a day trip. So you're going all the way out there to see something that, you know, maybe if I was on the way to somewhere, Emma was, there was a chance that she was going to be living in Birmingham for a year. So we might've done it then. I, I want to go to uh, Liverpool. I have to do the Liverpool thing at some point because I'm a Beatles fan. Um, I need to go to Ireland because I'm, I'm, uh, Am I Irish or Scottish? Dang it, I should know this. Cogshall. I think I'm, my grandmother was Scottish, not Irish. I've got a Welsh, uh, um, French, I, uh, Scottish, I think, and a quarter of each. Um, and then uh, Gypsy, kind of Slavic, you know, Czechoslovakia, somewhere. They don't know. I don't know where my great grandfather, my grandfather, my great grandfather was from. Oh, Hendrix recorded there too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it Hanks? Uh, okay, you tell me the name of the place. Um, yeah. So, um, so I had to go there. Um, I mean, I, the only thing I had to see when I was in London was Abbey Road, and I did that the first day, and it was amazing. I got a personal tour by the manager. She spent an hour and a half with us. <laughs> I think we got there at nine, and we were done by ten thirty or whatever. She takes us to the commissary. She goes, "How about a beer?" <laughs> and the boys were like. Well, I mean, they were old enough, I think. Well, for London, they were definitely old enough. I remember getting them in 2014, so Alex would have been... Wait, when did we go to... Oh, that would have been... 2011 is when we went to Paris the second time, and Alex would have been 19 and Jack was 17, and I took them to a, uh, a bar uh, called the Tennessee in Paris and got them their first beers we all got stella at stella artois, artois i don't know how to say it. stella's we got stella's uh i'm not a big uh drinker so i mean i'll have a beer every now and then or occasionally with friends i'll have a bourbon but um don't really care for the taste i like the effects but i don't like the taste um <laughs> yeah i understand dennis So, uh, Richard, I may have to hit you up if I, if I go back to London next year about some things I should see. Uh, but, Beth, when me and Emma and Alex went to Denmark Street, and then we went to Garden. Uh, what's that? Uh, shoot. Shoot. Uh, you're going to beat me to it. Cigars. Yes, I do. I, cigar. My, I smoke a pipe. I have my grandpa's pipes, and I have his blend, and I smoke... He has kind of a cherry Cavendish blend that I smoke, and it makes the house smell like my grandparents' house. So I will do that every now and then. Um, get the map of London. Hold on, let me pull up that. Um, I'm sure I have Denmark Street Park. There it is. And then right by, oh, Covet Garden. Yeah, Covet Gardens was amazing. Really cool. Um, and there was a great coffee shop there. Here, I got it marked here. Monmouth Co Coffee was really good. Um, you know what? Now I think about there was seating outside, but we sat inside. So there, are, I'm trying to think of some of the restaurants we went to. Uh, one restaurant we went to was the Abington, in, just Beth and I. Uh, and that was in, uh, let's see, oh, over here. Yeah, the Abington, which is in Kensington, I think. Um, really close to Holland Park. In fact, we walked through Holland Park from our apartment. Kind of went, yeah. We just took Holland Park Avenue or uh, Bays Bayswater Road into Notting Hill, past Notting Hill Gate, Holland Park, and then I, there was a little path I found, and then we went right down. And what's so funny is I that's where the Beckhams live is on Holland Park. What's crazy is if you go on Holland Park uh, and do Street View, uh, the Beckhams' house is blurred out. <laughs> so I was just talking to Cruz yesterday. Um, their house is that you, you know you're rich and famous when your house is blurred out on Google. Hyde Park is great, yeah. And you know we I wish I'd done more hiking at Hyde Park. I'm trying to think, you know we, we the kids were a little older, wasn't you know so we we did get Kenji. Let's see, we didn't do the, I didn't see the changing of the guard, which is a very touristy thing to do. Uh, we walked past the palace. We took the the traffic was really bad, so anytime we got on a bus, it was more like sitting in traffic. Uh, so I like walking, but London's so big. Paris is big. Um, what was Barcelona? We walked a lot. We did a couple 25,000 step days. There was only one time we took the train in Barcelona. The problem with the, the subways is that you're underground. You don't see anything. 
Like with Paris, one of the best things to do, I think it's bus number 99. I think it's bus 99. Uh, it starts it across real close to the Eiffel Tower and ends the at um, uh, what's a cemetery um, in the famous cemetery in in Paris. Uh, dang it. Yeah, it, the 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 thing is with this, the the tube will get you and the tube gets you around really fast and that's great. And we used it. We definitely used it. But you don't see any sights when you're on a tube. So, well, you do, but <laughs> not the sights you want to see. Uh, and so, uh, but in Paris, um, you can take uh, bus 99, I think, and it, it takes off the, the, the bus route number 99. Let me pull it up real quick. Um, and it takes you from the Eiffel Tower. It's like a euro, one euro. And you sit on this bus and you're getting a freaking $30 tour of Paris for a euro. Um, where's Paris? There it is. Famous cemetery in Paris is, uh, why don't I have it marked? So yeah, there's a train stop or bus stop at, right near the Eiffel Tower. Uh, Chant de Mar, the, the park, uh, kind of hard to say what direction, kind of southeast of, of the Eiffel Tower. And then it takes you to the cemetery. Where is that? Oh, no, that's not it. Now you would think it would be green. Somebody said it. I'm looking at the map and I'm sure someone said it. Yes, Pierre Lachat. Pierre Lachey, yeah. So we, you can. So it's literally like one or two euros. So for for five or ten euros, <laughs> all five of us got on this bus, and you were going along the Seine, and you're going through, you know. And so Pierre Lachey is. Where is it? No, I just have to. There we go. Where? Oh, it's. Oh, dang! I didn't realize it was so far east. Okay. Wow, yeah, so that that's a serious tour. And then from there we walked home. Um, because, uh, so you're in the 11th Um You kind of want, I mean, you got to go to Sacre Coeur, I guess, but you want to kind of stay away from the 18th, 19th, and 17th arrondissement. And it's even further out is where most of the, when you hear see all the unrest in Paris, they keep it pretty far out that way. Um, our apartment was in the 6th. Um, Right, right by Pont Neuf, which is the bridge that goes across the tip of the little island there. Um, so there were a couple more. One morning, Emma and I both got up. We couldn't sleep. We went down the street, got coffee, and got it to go. And we sat at the tip of the. Uh, it's so it was so fun. Sit there with your daughter to sit on the tip of the, with no you know no one's up yet. It's still like six in the morning, and the the island there in the middle of uh, uh, the Ile de Cité. Um, the big island has a the tip, um, and we we just sat on the tip with our feet kind of hanging over the edge, and just watched the boats and listened to the water lap on the shore. It's so, I mean, I'll never forget that time with my daughter. And so the next morning, I woke Beth up. I said, "Hey, let's go do this while the kids are still sleeping." So we went, up, and Beth and I did it the next morning. Yeah, Notre Dame is in the, in the Ile de City, and yeah, Notre Dame. But even more impressive, I mean, Notre Dame is insanely impressive, and I was so depressed when it got burned. But check out. Um, uh, Saint Chapelle, unbelievable. That's not how you spell it. Um, sorry. Uh, where is Saint Chapelle? The Notre Dame is there. It's 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 kind of Saint Chapelle is kind of hidden. Here it is. Uh, but you still have to pay to go there. No, yeah, yeah, you do have to pay. Uh, what I would do is um, share. Um, never been to Paris. That's like a, 
you, you're, if you're at Notre Dame, you might as well check out, check out Saint Chapelle. If you buy like a three or if you're going to be there for seven days, get a seven day museum pass. It gets you into a lot of museums. Uh, it gets you into the Louvre. Um, it gets you into a lot of the churches that have like Notre Dame. I totally recommend that. Or, or, or you can, I think what we did, we may have gotten the five day and just made sure we did all the museums in those five days. Um, and I went to another museum that most people don't know about. Um, the people go to the Louvre, everybody goes to the Louvre, but then there's the Museum uh, uh, de Lingerie, which is where the water lily paintings are that wrap around you. If you've ever seen the movie um, uh, Paris, uh, Midnight Paris, the Woody Allen movie, um, that um, is, a great, um, is, a, is a great thing to see. And I think it's included in the museum thing. But I did that by myself when Beth and the kids went to Versailles. Because I'd already done Versailles once. And I, my opinion, I mean, we and when they were little, we did Versailles. And it's it it was quite a horde over there. They went late. And that's one of the tricks with Versailles. Because you, you can walk around. You basically you go from one Louis Philippe gold-plated room to another... Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. And it's this giant horseshoe. It's pretty huge. And then, of course, the top of the horseshoe is the uh, Hall of Mirrors where the Treaty of Versailles was signed. It's amazing to be there. That's That alone is worth seeing. Uh, but if you... I think the grounds are open later. Oh, what's uh, Cochez? What's Co Coche? Coche, how do you say it? I'm going to look that up, audio. I still have my map of Paris up. Uh... Oh, is that a city? It's beautiful. Where is that? Okay, so one place I am going to go. Oh, that's way far away from Paris. That's almost Spain. Um, one place I am going to go. We may do a trip like this. Um, Beth is basically... Uh, Danish. So we may go to Denmark, which I would love to go to Copenhagen, but I'm sure there's some amazing other cities in Denmark as well. All of Denmark looks amazing. Um, and then, um, and then uh, we would go to, from there, we would go to, uh, where, where am I looking here? Dang it. Strasbourg, but we're, oh, Strasbourg's going to be close to Germany. Why is it not jumping out on the map, though? It's a pretty big city. Probably Colmer, but, um, oh, yeah, it, I was right on it, but it didn't say the name. Um, just south of there is Colmer, I think. I'm not saying it right, but. Comer. Comer just looks so cute. Diane, was it you that lived in Lyon? That, do I remember that right? That's crazy, Charlie. You know, we didn't go all the way to the top of the Eiffel Tower. I think Rick Steve said, yeah, you can go to this level. It's pretty much the same thing. And it was so much more expensive. You know, we just were, we were doing Europe on a shoestring budget. I think... And, and, you know, Diane, the, yes, Leon, uh, so is it Comer? It's just the cutest little town, um, and it's near Strasbourg, and I think it's on, how far away from? Oh, yeah, oh, it's not on, it's not on the Rhine, so it's, it's on its own thing, uh, but it's got canals and stuff, I think. You know, they just got a little river going through it. So definitely Comer is one of those places, and I, I'm not saying that right, but uh, we would definitely train to um, from, I've got to put a mark here just to remember to go to Comer. There we go. Okay, saved. Oh, it's I have it saved. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm trying to keep track of these. I mean, I wish we could go back to Europe. My, okay, 
Let me get your opinion on this. Do you think when everything opens back up, is everything going to be a lot? Is it going to be a lot cheaper to travel, like airfare and um, hotels? My concern is that we're going to have less competition, so there's going to be everything. Things are going to be more expensive. In other words, will the airlines? Will all the airlines survive? Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be cheaper to travel, but if it's cheaper, then everybody's going to be. Well, I think there's going to be enough people that are still afraid to travel that maybe there won't be. It may, may not be flooded. Or is it going to be something that only the rich can do again, which would be a real drag? Because we took the kids to Europe four times. I kid you not, I think we went free all four times. <laughs> the flight was free. If it wasn't free, we it, it got to be free. And Diane, remember that, and I can tell the story about the, those trips. But we went to Paris, then we went to Rome via Vienna. So we did Vienna for like 28, 24 hours, and then we went to Rome. And then we did London. Wait a minute. We did Paris again. We did Paris twice, but did we do a trip? Let's see, Paris, 2002. And then Paris. No, we did. So we just did Paris twice. And then we did London was the last trip we did with the kids. And then Beth and I have been to um, Barcelona, which we loved, and Amsterdam, which I love, but she, I don't think she dug Amsterdam. I think the whole prostitution thing, the red light district thing, kind of depressed her. Um, we, you know, again, it's not too hard to avoid it, but at the same time, it kind of shocks you when you see it. Because <laughs> there was this church I wanted. There were two churches in Amsterdam that were, I really love going to see the old churches. Well, in Amsterdam, they're not churches anymore. One was an art museum, and one was a Buddhist temple. <laughs> and the Buddhist temple was literally in this square, and it's a giant church. It's a gorgeous church, but they wanted like. 20 bucks or something to go tour it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. So we ended up going to uh, Harlem and we toured a church there. It was really nice. And then we had a great time in uh, The Hague um, with some friends that we met in Barcelona. Um, but <laughs> I didn't know that when we, this church is in a, you know, most churches are in like a giant piazza in Italy. They call it piazza or whatever. So a lot of giant, giant court yard. And then they have just big church, and you could see it. You're coming up on it, you're looking in, you're walking down the street, and all of a sudden, on my left, I look, and there's this big, big lady in a leopard skin something in a window, red light window, and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> I'm like, I guess, I guess that's you know. So it was, it was like, and then all, all I, then I noticed the whole courtyard was nothing but boxes, red boxes with windows. It's like, are you kidding? So, oh, yeah, new, same times, be kidding. Um, I, I mean, same days so far. Uh, new time is going to be 9 a.m., so you're going to have to get up earlier for me, sorry, uh, or watch on the repeat. <laughs> yeah, Mugu, Mugu. Yeah, hilarious. I know. So, uh, anyway, I got lots of trips I want to take, and, and so I'm hoping it's not ridiculous, and I'm hoping my income continues to go in the right direction so that we can justify it, and I don't have to be afraid to spend money. But I have so many airline miles now, we could totally fly to Europe, probably the two of us, three or four times for free. Uh, when we flew, the last trip we took, I flew business class. We flew business class for free, which was dangerous because now that's all I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang it. And I just, uh-oh, buffering. All right, looks like we're back to normal. I'm keeping my eye on the thing. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about traveling to Europe. So hopefully it will get yeah, Komar. That's, it's Renee. Oh, thank you, Renee. It's, I, it's just the sweetest looking little town. So if we go to Strasbourg, I'll def we'll definitely take a trip to Komar, maybe even do some overnights. Like three nights in Strasbourg and two nights in Comar or something like that. And I'm saying I know I'm not saying it right, but um, I would love to go to Lyon too. But I, I want to go to Lyon to see the light show in December. Um, I doubt if that'll ever happen in my life. Um, but I also want to do Scotland um, and Ireland. I want to do Croatia. Looks amazing. Oh my goodness! Now Croatia has kind of become the new Italy, so Croatia is getting really popular. I've got a trick for you guys, a tip I'm going to do. Um, so I told you about Duolingo, right? The, I'm learning Spanish on Duolingo. 
uh, and uh, yo no hablo espanol, but I'm learning. And just the the thing I want to look at see what language is the most popular on Duolingo, and then those are the countries to avoid for the short term because everybody's like, oh hey, you know I can speak Croatian, so I'm going to Croatia. So uh, and that's one where I might actually have the the guts to drive. Um, I may have to drive that. I may have to rent a car. I've never driven in Europe. I may have to let Beth drive. Um, but I, I've never driven. I've always liked to be in one city and just get to become a citizen. Uh, but now, you know, like we're, we've hit the big cities and walked all over them. And now I'm kind of thinking, okay, you know, Copenhagen, we can walk all over. But then if we train down to, if we do like two or three cities, if we train down to Strasbourg and we walk around Strasbourg, then we're going to either have, you know, dr drive or rent a or train down to, um, to Komar, Komar, I don't know how to say it. Um, yes, and you know, I doubt, I doubt Beth and I will go to the Netherlands, but you know, if I get asked to go for something for work, I might. Um, it's hard for me to necessarily leave town for work um, because that means I have to stop working in my studio, which is really where I make most of my income. Unless they pay me a lot of money. Uh, the trip to Europe, I mean, the trip to London will be for the, the Apex Legend composer, and uh, I'm sure they'll take good care of me. They'll fly me out business class. I'm sure the hotel will be great. So I'll pay for Beth's ticket so that she can go with me, and then um, I'm sure they'll pay for, I'll just have, you know, fly from London to other places uh, after, to uh, somewhere else from there. We might do the, if it's November, I doubt we'll do Scotland and Ireland, or either or. November might be kind of tough to do anything north of London. Uh, when were we in London before? I think we were in London. We were there from May. It was Alex's 22nd birthday. He turned 22nd on the 22nd of May. And uh, so... <laughs> oh, your internet is way better than in the U.S. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh, Board fingers. All right, it's been over two hours, almost two and a half hours. I'm going to get so many comments like, all you do is talk. Hopefully we got enough lesson now. Go to the Discord. Let me put the Discord link up one more time. The permanent link, so it's at the bottom of this lesson. I should have been doing it more. This is a, should be a permanent le link. Somebody said they needed a four-digit code. I had no idea what they were talking about. Um, but I just posted those. Um, this is posted up there. Okay, so we got this if you need it. Um, it looks like our peak was about 37, 35. Okay, not bad. Um, let's do a submit. Uh, we'll go to Scotland as my grandmother was from Sky. Nice. Uh, see you later, Dave Richard Larson. Um, Malta. Yeah, Malta is supposed to be really nice. I wouldn't mind, you know, my, my dad's favorite place, I think, was Mallorca. His favorite, and he only went to Europe once, uh, back when my parents were uh, first married, before we, they had kids, they went to Europe for like a month or a long, maybe three months, uh, back in the 50s, right after graduating college. Um, and then, um, yeah, B, B Kitty, I wouldn't go to Gary, Indiana. <laughs> That's not a destination. Uh, play something melodic instead of just shredding. All right, I can do that with. I, I don't have any. It's hard to play melodic when you um, uh, don't have music to play to. I don't really have. Uh, well, I do. What am what my my score that this thing that I'm working on? Let's see what. The, <laughs> Thank you.
I don't know if that's melodic or not. <laughs> Is that melodic? I'm losing viewers. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and I was in D minor. So if you, uh, that, that piece was in D minor. So if you uh, do your homework and do the D minor, find all those five notes all over the fretboard using the, the oh, by the way, uh, shoot. Here's, the, here's that page. So it, oops, that's on Safari. Uh, here it is. Okay. So these people are going to wonder, why are so many people going to our website? Um, so here's a link to the, it's a GIF. It's not a PDF or, I don't know. Anyway, it printed up like this. So it was pretty good. Um, 1999 by Pepper Brown. Oh, Pepper Brown. That's weird. Um, but basically this thing uh, without all of my markings on here. So you can use, print up a bunch of those and do a bunch of different keys. And that would be great for learning your fretboard. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to think about the, the 10, the 10 thing, top 10 things you need to know to play guitar. I don't know. Like I said, it's going to be one of those things. I, I thought I would get more grief on my 10 tips for playing faster. Um, uh, I didn't really get too much grief for that. Um, but, um. But, uh, um, I, yeah, the. The ten, 10 most, I could do it like a a, um, a uh, David Letterman countdown, you know, number 10 kind of thing. Uh, that would be kind of fun. But uh, anyway, I, I could do it with number 10 <laughs> with all the vocals and everything. It would be hilarious. So uh, listen, I'll, I'll see you guys on Friday. Sorry I went so long. Actually, I'm apologizing to myself more than you guys. Uh, that piece you heard, I got to finish that. So that's just early in the, there's really not very much on there except some strings and some percussion, so, and a little bit of French horn. So I got to finish that for a show, and then I'm waiting for some files to drop. I got a couple pop artists that are hitting me up for songs, and I'm like, oh, I got to come up with ideas for them. So I got a pretty full day, and I'm already tired. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I want to move this to 9 o'clock. So hopefully Monday we'll start 9 o'clock. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you all later. We're going to end this stream. I've actually got a button for that, whereas I didn't have a button for the start stream. Um, and I think stream health, no data. So 10. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the beginning. So stream health has been good. So I guess you never got any buffering. Uh, don't need to go anywhere. La Jolla, about as good as any other thing. There you go. Well, that's true. That's a nice area, Charlie. I just like, I don't know. I, li I like, I particularly like going to places where I don't speak the language. Something about, something about that is fun for me. Uh, although I'm learning Spanish and I'm not planning on going back to Spain. Although I would love to go to Andalucía, which is the region of Spain where flamenco music was created. Um, that would be a dream trip. Uh, but that might be a thing where I take three months and do that to study flamenco. But I don't know. I'd have to be retired to do that. So anyway, God bless you guys. I will see you on Friday at the normal time. And then Monday I will try the new time. And if I don't make it, you'll be the first to know. Okay, bye-bye.